Hey guys. Hey, it's Lindsay. Um, it's 3.02 and we are here for Whetstone Wednesday. We, I, I have here on the browser a number of submissions from our patrons um, who are members of the Copy That Patreon. And we are currently waiting for Rod, who is in um, what seems to be an important meeting. And um, it's wrapping up at 3, so he should hop on in just a moment. So... Um, since it's only a few minutes after three, let's go ahead and give everyone maybe a minute or a minute or two more to hop on. Thanks to all of you guys for being here. Um, shoot me a quick comment so I know who is here. Hey, hey, Dane. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to go over the, the ropes for new members here. We host Whetstone Wednesdays, the critiques. Well, these streams are actually free to the public on our YouTube. But if you are looking to have your copy critiqued, um, you can actually submit it we, on the Discord. So every time we host one of these, we make an announcement and we ask for submissions over on the exclusive critiques premium uh, plus channel, which you get access to once you are a paying Patreon. Um, and if you have since joined us since last week and do not yet see exclusive critiques in your um, Discord menu, be sure to send us a, a note. You can DM us or, you know, post anywhere and copy that and at us and we will uh, pick it up and make sure that you are, you have access to everything that you deserve. Um, hey, Evan. Hi, Amon. So, um, let's see, what are some other ropes? Last week we had a, a great session and we uh, went over a lot of copy and we um, missed a few. We got to the end and we ran out of time. So I think we're going to, there he is. Hey. Hey. Hope you had a good Sorry, meeting. Sorry, Yeah. Um, just a quick thing up at the top. I'm going to have to dip again at 3.30 to 4, but then I'll be back back. Sounds good. Okay. Let's see how many we can get through until then. Um, I was just explaining last time we had dropped off a little soon. We didn't get through everything. So I went ahead and pulled those up. And awesome. Yeah. And I think we could probably maybe start there. Sounds good. Love it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We're going to start with copy of ICE Consulting, Cloud Funnel copy. Okay, head to the top. Just gonna go ahead and read it. Okay, so this is add and lead magnet copy for cloud migration service uh, for an IT company that works with life sciences like pharma, biotech, et cetera, startups in that space. The banner ad is placed in a popular industry newsletter Life companies are unique in that commercialization often takes years. They must go through research cl clinical trials uh, before and if they are to generate revenue. Ellis companies rely heavily on investment, which has dried up lately, and need to conserve resources if they are to survive and make it. But the topic of the cloud, especially moving all their IT to the cloud, is foreign to most. Um, so this is targeting an exec in life sciences who is 50 plus, has a PhD, lives in California, most are top 1% of earners. The resource will help you lower your cloud costs and help your team become more efficient in helping you reach commercialization faster. Get our guide for free and then download the guide. The awareness is that they are aware that cloud computing allows life science companies to lower their IT costs and improve efficiency, but they don't have the internal resources to handle a complicated migration. It's good context. It's very good context. Good job. Yeah, well done. So banner ad copy. Headline, a, a guide to cloud migration. Subhead, overlooked costs and missed opportunities. CTA, learn more. And then a secondary is a guide to maximizing the value of cloud. Overlooked costs and missed opportunities. Learn more. Okay. Um, before... We make comments on this. Let's take a look at where these ads are pointing to. This is landing page copy, a guide to maximizing the value of cloud migration image of the resource. 
Moving to the cloud is a significant step to lowering costs while making meaningful progress toward higher efficiency. Many life science companies are annually saving millions from their migrations. Famously, cloud computing and AI played a crucial role in accelerating the design of the COVID-19 vaccines, shaving years off the normal development timeframe. Unfortunately, the migration process itself often requires months of planning, more resources than expected, and several iterations to fully realize the benefits of cloud computing. If not planned or executed properly, companies often experience downtime inefficiencies and fail to achieve their desired results. A survey by Accenture found life science companies the lowest in achieving their desired innovation, data access, and analytics goals from cloud. Moreover, less than half, 43%, said they were very satisfied with their cloud outcomes achieved to date. For those reasons, we've created a guide to maximizing the value of cloud migration for the life sciences. In our guide, we discuss the most commonly overlooked cloud computing costs for life science companies and common saving pitfalls, a framework for, ev for evaluating and choosing the provider that best meets your unique business requirements, how to capitalize on the array of products and services offered by cloud providers like machine learning and AI to accelerate commercialization and much more. And then CTA is download the guide. Okay. What do we think? Ha. Huh. Hmm. This is um <laughs> so uh, this feels like it was written by Accenture. In that, like this is the kind of thing I would expect from like a consultant, in that it's very information dense. Yep. Clearly you've done your research. Yep. The information is actually like pretty useful. Like I I learned things reading this. It's like it's actually really, yeah. really good. Um it's written pretty well. Um however this feels more like along the lines of like a white paper tonally than it does yes. like a piece of advertising or marketing. And so it's very information dense, but it's not really leading the reader in terms of saying you need this. It's not pushing on pain. It's like, it's acknowledging pain points, but not pushing and poking and prodding them to say, Hey, don't you really want to? And so if yeah. someone's reading this for the first time, I would imagine that if they click the banner ad, which, had some issues we should go back to that they're probably not going to have been moved much because if they've read this they probably already kind of know this stuff mm -hmm. um, and so you know they might click they might not click but i don't think that this does a ton of work in terms of getting them closer to the click yeah um i agree you covered a lot of ground i think tonally i completely agree with you like you know these these um it's targeting a person who is you know, probably used to seeing this sort of jargon and reading white papers and, you know, they have a pretty sophisticated vocabulary and they're familiar with the sciences and things like that. But like, there's, there's still a person and like speaking conversationally um, still works. And I think you will have a lot more success um kind of changing that tone a little bit. And like Rod said, um, going harder into the pain points as opposed to just, you know, a lot of this descriptive, like look at this first line, there's just a lot of like really big words and you're talking at this person with like this like tech jargon um, yeah. language, like moving, the moving to the clouds uh, is a significant step to lowering costs while making meaningful progress towards higher efficiency. Like just tell me plain, in plain English, um, like what what you you mean? Um, were you gonna say something, Ron? Yeah, because I mean, just off the top of my head, you could say moving to the cloud can be the difference between um, increasing your business's efficiency and going bankrupt before you've reached commercialization. Yeah, like that's the same thing, but just you're setting the stakes out there. It's like, oh shit, pay, I need to pay attention to this. You know, I know that I can save money. I know that I can be more efficient, but is it that big of a difference? Um, and it says yes. you have to say all of those things in like a, in a more grandiose way. Yeah, and I also think like at this stage of the game, if it's true that this person is aware that uh, already that cloud computing is something that can save costs, is something that they probably need to do, but you know, is just something that they've put on the back burner, like haven't addressed properly because um, 
of all of the, it's going to take a lot of moving parts and they don't have the time, you know, or the ener- the resources presently to think through it all. Um, I would flesh this second part out. Ooh, it's about to storm even, even more. Um, because I think this, this is a, a critical piece of like social proof where mm-hmm. we're saying like famously c- cloud computing and AI played a crucial role in accelerating the design of the COVID-19 vaccine shaving years off the normal development time frame. So like, this is something that we know, and I know from just the investment side, um, COVID uh, just uh, like forced agencies like regulation industries to to figure out how to approve like drugs a lot faster and um so now it's a lot easier to come to market and quicker and if cloud going to the cloud had a lot to do with that i would try to flesh this out a little bit more and include some more specific examples maybe of companies of of other life science companies that this you know this client specifically ice consulting has worked with um and then you know include specific examples of say of like how many millions of savings from x company you know y company shaved uh you know seven months off their timeline if you can get specifics like that i would i would definitely try to include them here um because i think one of the biggest things that my mind would immediately jump to as a as a prospect is you know okay like i need to be moved more towards selecting a provider to help me do this right that's the type of convincing i need at this point if i'm already at the stage of awareness that you, you know, you've told us that this person is. Did that make sense? Yeah. Can you hear me, Rod? Yeah, sorry. Can you not hear me? No, I can now. Oh, sorry. I said, yes, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't hear. Maybe you were muted. Um, let's see what else. What do we feel about these the banner ads? Uh, they don't really do anything for me. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, if you are aware of cloud migration, but you don't want it, you're not. I don't want to read a guide about it. Yeah, I don't read a guide like, for it. If I'm yeah. if if I'm like the head of a life science company, I have a PhD, I live in California, I'm a top percent earner. Like maybe I'm you know high up in one of these companies. Like I personally don't need a cloud a guide to cloud migration. Like I I I need somebody on my team to understand how to do it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, what I, what I need, it sounds like is convincing that ice consulting is the, the consulting company to help me do it. Right. Yeah. Like I'm assuming that's the client. Um, and so I would, I would go more along those lines. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> wow. Did you hear that thunder? <laughs> Is that thunder? There's always something, I swear. It's it like, sounds like trees falling or something. I know. It's tables moving or it's like a huge tropical storm. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Stay safe. Yep. Or don't. You know, or hopefully don't my worry. internet doesn't go out. Um, yeah. I mean, so I, I think a, a just good pin to put in the guide part is like the only people who need guides to cloud migration are people who have already decided to do cloud migration so mm-hmm. like if you think your audience has not already decided that and you think you need to persuade them to do that you should never be marketing or putting or leading with here's a guide to this thing you don't know you want yet mm-hmm. um i think for the second one i don't again if they haven't chosen to go w- with the cloud they don't mm-hmm. really care about guides to maximizing because they're not doing anything with it you know yeah. you know zero times a hundred is still zero so you know again they don't want to maximize it i think here's a good place to lead with something like um you know the unexpected ways in which you could save or here's how you know the same breakthrough that led to the COVID vaccine could yeah you know help your company accelerate whatever whatever, whatever. obviously COVID mm-hmm. stuff is a little touchy in terms of advertising so don't go with that angle but like something like that um you want the surprise, you want the curiosity, you want the, oh my God, this is even better than I, it has more potential than I thought it did. 
Yeah. I liked this, um, you know, like get yeah. to market faster with um, like expedited cloud migration or something like that. Um, this idea, just putting it front and center that this is the thing that you need to, to basically get to market faster, because that's the one thing I think is on all of these execs minds is, is how do we, how do we reach that point faster to where we can start making money and, and not just spending our investment dollars, which are drying up. I think that's a good, um, a good pain point to kind of put front and center. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's check out the comments. Any thoughts? What did you guys think of this? Any thoughts from those in attendance? Um, while we're waiting for that, someone asked a question early on. Ash said, hey, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. I have a quick question. A business wants me to write some blog posts for them and has asked my radius per 500 words. This would be my first client, my first ever client. How much should I charge? Hmm. Um, we get the how much I charge question a lot. And we probably have a bunch of videos on this. So we'll just go to our channel really quick on YouTube and like search if you want like a deeper answer right now. But I think the easiest thing to do is just think about, well, how long does it take you to write 500 words? You know, parse that out to like, you know, break that down to like an hourly rate and then yep. think of like how much money do you want to make per hour? So if you want to make 15 bucks per hour and it takes you, let's say, um, an hour to write 500 words because remember blog posts are not just writing you have to do research as well and so make sure you're yeah. factoring that into your time okay how much if, you know 15 dollars an hour rate you can you can do that up you can do that down you can increase your rates you can lower your rates um and then because i think i think the plus the per word thing can be a little deceiving because it's like it's it's not actually per word it's the time investment so you know yeah just figure out how much what, what the translation is between words and time for you personally and then go back to them um and give them a rate yeah i mean every time i i see a per word price i don't know i i personally don't like it like yeah you could have shitty words you could have good words like and how you get it done is not really like my business as long as it's done well and so I'm much more like, give me a fixed price for, you know, this amount. And then Ash, if you, you know, it's, you said it's your first ever client. So if you feel like you, um, you know, want to give them a discount to just try it out in order to, you know, form a relationship, you can do that too. But just, you know, make sure that you don't, um, you don't give the illusion that you don't value your time. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say too, I think there are probably some like standard rates. So like I've seen anything between like two cents to five cents per word for like kind of entry level type blog posts, which would put you at like, you know, 10 to 25 bucks per 500 words, which mm -hmm. is like not like super great. But also if you can do it quickly, then it can, you know, that does rack up pretty quickly. So like, if you could do that in 30 minutes, you know, yeah. you'd be making 50 bucks an hour, which is like good money. Um, yeah. So keep that in mind. I will say this is like, this is like real life copywriter advice, not like your grandma's, your, your, your teacher's copywriting advice. Um, the reality is, is that if someone is paying you per word that they are thinking about volume of content, not quality of content, and if what they want is volume, you should give them volume and not yeah. quality. Um, and so if you're in a position where like, that's the kind of work you have, and this person wants you to write, you know, like eight of these per week, you should not spend an hour researching every single one. You should do the bare minimum amount of research that it takes you to do something of like, you know, acceptable quality and then turn out 500 words and then move on to the next one. Um, that will allow you to, you know, do more work, build up a portfolio. You will get faster at it as you do it. Um, and then eventually you can, you know, pitch higher jobs or, you know, different blog posts or, you know, whatever kind of work, but it's, it's your job to make as much money as you can. And so like, don't try to be so good that you end up screwing yourself over by like 
um, yeah. doing better work than your client's paying for. Yeah. And um, I mean, not to turn this into a Q and a session, we'll get through this real fast, but this kind of piggybacks off it and then we'll get back into copy. But um, mm -hmm. Dane is just asking not to throw up your comment, like to know how to get a client if you've never had experience. Um, and I just wanted to point out that uh, this, this is a good process for beginners. Just emailed a bunch of different businesses, showed them my spec pieces when they asked for examples. Um, um, and so, yeah, spec pieces, you don't, you don't have to, you know, it's, everyone's always like, how do I get experience if nobody will hire me and it's my first client? That's what spec pieces are for. And, mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, virtually write up anything depending, um, and that's, that is, you know, more targeted and focused towards your prospective clients industry or, or whatever. Um, we have, we have a video on kind of outlining uh, kind of a starter spec portfolio, right, Rod? Uh, probably. I think I, we do. I think in the Q and A series. Um, yeah. There's a play, we have a Q and A playlist on YouTube. Just go to our channel, click playlist Q and A. Yep. Um, there's a page in there, or there's a video in there that video talks about there. creating your first por portfolio. And all the spec pieces you should have in there to kind of get yep. started. Cool. Okay. Um. So again, like you know, for a landing page, I feel like it's it this isn't bad. I would just, I would, like we said, cut out the jargon, speak at a more accessible level. Um, try to include some more specifics here for like maybe social proof companies that have had successes with ice consulting, you know, how much time, how much savings. Um, see if you can come up with a good bulleted list there to include, um, you know, as used by, you know, ABC company and, you know, XYZ company and blah, 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 blah. That always goes a really long way um, with this sort of target. They want to see what similar, you know, what other similar companies have worked with ICE Consulting with, with success. Um, do you have any other thoughts before we move on to the next one? Okay. Okay. Jump start songwriting. This is Sean. We've seen this one before. This was Jumpstart Guitar, and then now it's Jumpstart jump Songwriting. Would like help with the USP and turning it into a big idea. Okay. This is a USP. Product is Jumpstart Songwriting. New name from Jumpstart Guitar. The avatar is most people that want to learn how to write a song. Okay. Songwriting program that will give beginners a songwriting structure that's proven so they can write great strong, great songs. USP Jumpstart Songwriting is the only songwriting program that uses the Nashville numbering system to write great songs. And the only one that comes with a free MP3 that gives an example of the song used to teach beginning songwriters how to write a hit song. Okay. So to turn the USP into a big idea. Yeah. Um, well, I think, in, you know, a good starting place is just to help with the USP in general. This is, this is just not tight at all. Just, it's not tight writing. It's, you know, jumpstart songwriting. It's a songwriting program to write songs and the songs and, you know, lots of songs you teach, you get a song and then it helps you write a song you know, for songwriters, it's just, it's, it seems like this is the first draft of something. Um, let's see, the only one that comes with a free MP3 to give an example of the song used to teach. So this is an example of, um, like, this is, this is an added, an added benefit. Um, uh, an added bonus report or an added premium that you would kind of use in an offer, but I would not necessarily consider that a part of a USP. Um, a USP for those mm -hmm. who are new is your unique selling proposition. So what do you feel like is the one thing that makes your product uh, unique and stand out among all the other competitors on the market? And so 
you know, you could say that you're the first one, that, the only one that gives you a free MP3 that gives an example of a song used to teach beginner songwriters how to write a song. But like that, you know, that could change the second an another company is like, oh, you know, we haven't, you know, we're going to throw in an MP3. I wouldn't focus so much on like little premiums like that that you can use to stack your offer down the line. I would focus more on like, what is it that is at the heart of the uniqueness of this program? And last mm -hmm. we, we talked about this, like the Nashville numbering system, I'd read a little bit about what that is. I guess it's just, um, a, you know, a very simple structure for teaching people how to, how to write songs. Right. Um, and so maybe that's all you need. It's the only songwriting program that uses the Nashville numbering system to write great songs. I just don't know that. I, I guess I don't know enough to know if it's, um, this seems to be a very common system, the Nashville numbering system. If I go to YouTube, I can see YouTubers teaching songwriting with the Nashville numbering system. Mm -hmm. And so and it's all free information. And so I'm not sure that, that that's something that that's convincing or unique enough. Yeah, I think I think to me it's like So let's talk about USPs for a second. Mm -hmm. Um unique selling proposition. The first word there is the key one, unique, right? Um mm -hmm. there is a challenge that everyone is a copywriter faces when you're writing for a business that sells something that other people sell and you have to come up with a way to be unique when the reality is is that there's almost certainly someone out there doing the same thing you are in a similar way um and so you have to find a way to stand out and be unique one one thing you can do is actually you know create something new and that is literally unique you know it's the only rod satterwhite patented songwriting program that let him do this one very specific thing no one else has ever managed to do. That's one way of doing it. Most businesses can't do that. It's the reality. Um, and so what you end up having to do is you pick something that's unique in that no one else or other people might be using it, but no one else is actually like marketing based off of that thing. Um, and so it may be the case that other people are using the national numbering system um, to write songs or to you know teach people to write songs. Mm -hmm. But if this is like the thing that you feel like is the root of your product and there's nothing else you can sell, find something within that system, find a component of it that other people mm -hmm. aren't talking about when they talk about teaching people using the system. So, you know, you could say, I don't know, this secret strange, like don't call it the national numbering system, say, you know, that uses this, um, you know, historically relevant that, um, you know, musical pattern that's present and stuff since the classical mm -hmm. era, yada, 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 to get to that has helped us develop this unique system, the jumpstart songwriting system, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that's how you get a USB using the same thing that everyone else is doing. But you, that does require that you get a little bit creative with the rest of the copy as well. It's not just the name of your system. It is the way in which you're framing every other component that feeds up into that larger idea. Totally agree. You've um, got to find something in your in your system that is somewhat different. I don't know yeah. much about this, but is it like, you know, the only songwriting program that uses, uses the Nashville numbering system to write great songs um, without ever having to learn how to read sheet music or, you know, without, yeah. I, I don't know what, what that thing is. Um, I wish I, I knew more about, you know, songwriting and music to be able to deliver some good advice here, but um, that's going to be on you to dig a little bit deep, deeper and figure out what that thing is. Yeah. Um, I, I think one thing that will help a lot too is to sort of narrow your, is narrow your focus of your audience. I don't, if I am looking for something to help me start writing songs, I'm not looking for something that's going to help me write a hit song. Um, yeah. that's going to be like on the radio or whatever. So if it's a focus on beginners, you know, talk about, Hey, this is a system that has been proven throughout centuries of, you know, music writing, songwriting, um, to work. And we're going to use that to help teach you as someone who knows nothing, how to write songs that people love, um, 
or that don't suck um, easily without having to read, learn how to read music free, focused, useful, not over promising some shit. Because if like if someone's, if I think if I, if I want to write a song, I'm playing guitar, I want to like, you know, learn how to seduce the ladies. And someone's like, yeah, behind my system, you'll be the ne next Britney Spears. I'm going to be like, that's probably not true. Even yeah. I don't think I'm that good. Yeah. And then on the point, um, Sean, this is Sean Van Zant's copy um, of turning this into a big idea. I There's just not enough here to try to mm -hmm. uh, flesh this out and to turn it into a big idea. We just did a, um, a video, though. We released it on Thursday, I believe, last week of about the radio test and the radio test is a really helpful framework for evaluating a big idea um and figuring out if you have one you know before you start working on something and fleshing it out um it's helpful to know if if you do have a big idea so the radio framework r stands for relevant so um is does the idea immediately relate to something that your target kind of already has in their mind or already thinks something that the the market generally feels um but just needs to see stated in plain words in front of them and then they see it and they're like oh yes like it it's immediately relevant to them um and then a is um oh, this is i'm looking at a something that's different this one says affirmative um does it affirm feelings and emotions that the market already has um and then is it dense enough and for me this is one of the big missing pieces for the information that we have right here usually you know if you're figuring it out if you have a big idea you need to see you need to see some density in there is enough background information that you could fill you know four or five pages writing about it um you know, was there a new discovery about the way the human brain perceives music that now, you know, whatever, like people are tapping into to write new songs, or is there something in the songwriting industry that's changed that you're going to, you want to tell a story about, or, um, you know, something like that, just information that's dense enough that you can kind of slowly unravel it in an intriguing way to hook your reader initially, and then kind of string them along with this intriguing story and ultimately compel them to buy something because all along the way, again, you are confirming, you're affirming things that they already know to be true, that they already feel inside of them um, and that they thought and wanted. And, you know, now you're here stating it plain as day for them. Um, I in the radio test is for intriguing. Is it intriguing enough to, um, you know, trigger that, curiosity and and those emotions in your prospect and then ultimately original is there something different that you know while while it sounds familiar this is putting uh, an interesting spin on the to topic that for so that's the radio test i encourage you to go and um check the video out further and then maybe you know next time around next week if you want to flesh this out some more, um, we can look at it again. I would recommend um, coming up with a landing page. Or um, if you want to sell an actual program, one of uh, like a common piece of copy that we use a lot in the financial world is, is um, the long order form. So rather than just a very descriptive order form this is what you get blah 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 it there's like some copy some long form long longer form copy at the beginning that is you know selling that story um that that i talked about yeah um i gotta be right back put together one so of those and you. come back yeah yeah see you one sec cool um let's see so Player disrupted, um, contributing some thoughts here. So example USP, let's say national numbering system is a common tool, but hard to learn and master. So um, this program simplifies the learning process of a core musical instrument that other courses struggle to teach. That's cool. Uh, I like that a lot. So 
that's a good strategy, figuring out where the other courses um, fail or they what they often don't teach and then amplifying that selling against the alternative is a really great example. I love that. Thanks player disrupted. Um, guys, if you've been on this for a while, there's a, there's like a thunderstorm happening. So if my internet starts going out a little bit, could you guys just shoot me a note in the comments so that I know that you guys can hear me and everything's okay. Um, Rod had to duck out for a quick meeting and then he's gonna, he's gonna be back in 20 minutes or so. Um, okay. So I don't know if you're here, Sean, but I hope that was helpful. And if you're not here, I, I am sure that you will, you will come back around on the replay. Thanks for all the nice comments about my, about my hat. Um, it says brunette. I think it's really funny because, um, I don't know. It, <laughs> somebody said your, your hat is very just generally descriptive, but for those, um, non- Americans, there's kind of a an expression here. If you're blonde, well, this was actually back in the day anyway. Blondes have more fun, but they're maybe not so intelligent. And brunettes is a commentary to the opposite. <laughs> so I thought it was a kind of funny hat. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to the next piece of copy. Hold on, let me pull it up. Let's see, so we got through Ice Consulting, we got through Jumpstart Songwriting, and now we are going to move on. Let's see, present, share screen, Bulgarian bag, sales letter, this one looks, wow. <laughs> okay. This looks interesting. I have no clue what this is about. Um, oh God, I I hope this is not a, a spoof. Let's see. <laughs> All right, grab a lamb and swing it around your shoulders. Now feel how powerful this Bulgarian celebration will make you a truly functional athlete. Hmm. All right. So first of all, I'm going to see if I can pull up some context. Does anybody have context for this interesting piece of copy? Um, the Bulgarian handbag. Let's see. I'm trying to find it. No, this is just David. David Bruckner. So David, if you are here and you are attending and you have some added context for us, I think that would be helpful for everyone. Typically, guys, if um, you do submit your copy, please give us some helpful context about your target audience, about um, their level of awareness, um, you know, things like that. All right, so grab a lamb, swing it around your shoulders. Now feel how powerful this Bulgarian celebration will um, make you a truly functional athlete. Bulgarians know very well what it means to swing a lamb. If you get the opportunity to swing one, it's only because you are the champion. It means you have won the Bulgarian folk-style wrestling festivals and your reward, a lamb. Now, you might be thinking how useless, but in reality, I'm here to tell you that a lamb is the most useful resource for your body if you want to be a top athlete. What do I mean by that? Well, just like I said, once you win that last wrestling match, you are given a lamb. Now, what you're supposed to do is grab the lamb from the legs and swing it onto your shoulders and then just proudly walk through the audience like a lion. Wow. This is awesome. But how is it useful? The trick is in the motion. You see, bringing a lamb to your shoulders is not an easy task. It re requires technique and strength. It has everything to do about being a top athlete, if that's what you're wondering. But hey, as fun as it sounds, we're not here to talk about lambs, although a roasted one doesn't sound too bad right now. We're here to talk about how this simple motion will take you to a whole new level. First of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Coach Ivano, uh, Ivanov, a world-class athlete and Olympian in 1996 in the sport of Greco-Roman wrestling. Now, I train my own Olympians as a god-level coach in the United States Olympic Training Centers. 
Okay, now let's roll back a little bit. Remember, I just said that swinging a lamb onto your shoulders would be the most beneficial thing in order to uh, be a top athlete. Well, even though it's true, how in the world are we going to find a lamb ready to pick up? Besides, their weight ranges from 100 to 350 pounds. Can you imagine swinging a 300-pound lamb? No? Good. I can't either. One thing is swinging the lamb onto your shoulders and swinging it around your shoulders multiple times is a totally different thing. But like I said earlier, the trick is in the motion. What do I mean by the motion? The sole motion of swinging something around your shoulders is the greatest thing you can do because you're strengthening your whole body. Excuse me, but tell me, can you think about a tool that you can swing around that will work every single part of your body? Please don't say lamb. <laughs> you probably thought about a kettlebell, a steel mace, uh, steel mace or a club, and you're probably right, but I've got something way better for you. And it's the mere reason why I started this letter talking about lambs. You see, I'm glad I was born in Bulgaria. This beautiful wrestling festival tradition gave me a great idea. And now I share it with you, my fellow athlete. <laughs> you guessed it right, a lamb-shaped sandbag. But from now on, let's not call it that. I'm introducing to you the Bulgarian bag. The Bulgarian bag is a perfect tool for developing muscular endurance as well as for increased power and strength. How is this going to make you a top athlete? Easy. Just swing it around your shoulders and see the magic happen. This powerful tool will increase strength and muscular endurance of your grip, your wrists, your arms, your shoulders, back, your legs. This is all, this is all you need if what you want is to become a top athlete. Of course, if you want to work out uh, for fun, this is going to be amazing too. Do you know why it is functional? It incorporates all primal movement patterns that mimic natural movements because of its shape. Looks like a lamb, right? Material and construction. You can use a Bulgarian bag to develop quickness and agility in ways that solid iron weights and circuit machines will not. This bag allow, uh, allows for upper body and lower body training while emphasizing grip strength. Three types of handles allow you to execute a variety of exercises by using different grips. Okay, this copy is super compelling. I'm enjoying it a lot, and I'm on page six of eight, so I'm going to stop there. Um, but I have to say, I I am loving how this this copy is going, and I learned a lot. I my first inclination. Um, you could see how confused I was in the beginning and, you know, not having a lot of context about this. I don't know, you know, the, the, the target that it's going to, I'm assuming obviously it's, it's, um, people who are on fitness lists, avid, you know, athletes, people who are working out and going to, going to the gym a lot, but I have no context about, um, how they're receiving this. And so, you could tell just, you know, coming at this totally cold, having kind of no basis of understanding, I, I, I had no clue what it was about. Grab a lamb and swing it around your shoulders. Um, feel how this powerful Bulgarian celebration will make you a truly functional athlete. Um, let's see, Bulgarians know what I, I, I would, while I love this headline and this subhead, I would just make it a lot more apparent that this is targeting athletes like to me um like rather this is this is a more apt headline how you know um how this um powerful bulgarian um technique will make you a truly functional athlete or um let's see well, you know, not to come up with something on the spot, but I would, I would play with this a little more and make it the headline and make it super obvious that what people are going to discover is something about some secret technique, you know, you learn in Bul Bulgaria from the Bulgarians, um, that you can learn and use to become a truly functional athlete. Um, this, while it's funny, while it's clever, um, a lot of times like clever copy like this can be lost on the reader, especially, you know, it's their first line. They're not, they don't have any context, um, if, if they're, you know, like me and, um, it's, it's, it can just be confusing. 
And so, you know, maybe that, maybe a spot for that is further down in the copy. And I would make the headline a lot more, um, I would try to add some more intrigue, some, um, yeah, well, mostly just intrigue. Um, okay, so then getting into this first line, Bulgarians know very well what it means to swing a lamb. Yeah. I mean, I love this story. I think this is a ex really good example of great storytelling and using story to illustrate um, the point that you want to make, which is ultimately that this movement that the you know Bulgarian champion does again and again and again. Um, when he receives a lamb, when he wins the lamb, it's the ultimate um, demonstration of his superior strength and technique because that is the one movement um, that he must do at the end that um, it basically demonstrates his powers and why he won. And so I think it's a, a really great story. I wouldn't change a thing like that. Um, what I think you could do is, is um, so one of the things we talk about a lot in copy is the golden thread. And what, you know, I, I kind of imagine copy as, um, you know, beads on literally strung together on a golden thread. And you want the reader to always, you know, in the moment that they are in the copy to, you know, understand where they've come from and also have hints of where they're going to go next. Um, and so I think one thing that you could do here is include some little bead in here about, um, you know, what, why the story is going to be relevant to, you know, something you're going to reveal down the line. And so, uh, you know, a lot of times like we see um, beginning copywriting, especially when they're telling stories like this, they just kind of go on and on and on and on about the aspects of this story. And while it's intriguing, it's not pinned into that golden thread argument of like, why is this ultimately relevant? And so that was my feeling kind of in the beginning is it was to back up the risk in doing that is um, you're risking your, your reader being kind of uninformed. You're just solely going on intrigue and they have, they may be lacking that forward thinking context. And so if you're, it, it's just a risk, you're going, you're going solely on intrigue and they may think, you know, uh, this isn't, you know, this isn't relevant or this isn't interesting or whatever. And then you lose them. But if you can hint as to why you're telling me this story, why this matters now um, in a way that is relevant to me, as an athlete, you know, as somebody who's inter interesting, er, interested in functional medicine, um, you're including a promise to them that, that you'll get to the point more or less, and that will enable them to keep reading through this story. Um, I, I hope that made sense. So, you know, we're talking about your reward, a lamb, you might be thinking how useless, um, here to tell you is the most useful resource in your body if you want to be a top athlete. Um, and in a moment, I'm going to demonstrate how, you know, this movement, you know, does blah, 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 or whatever. Um, and then let's keep going. So I think this is all great. Um, one, another thing that I wanted to comment on, um, so this is great. You have a world-class athlete, an Olympian from 96, who is now coaching and training Olympians. Um, I think that you you should flesh out his credibility a little bit more. Um, has he trained any famous names? Um, how long has he been training? Um, who has, you know, who has he trained? Um, I, would, I would try to flesh this out a little bit, maybe tie it into – um, you know, the successes of his proprietary training or whatever. But I think this is a great placement for it. Um, let's see. The trick is in the motion. Um, 
this was another spot that as I was reading, um, something that kind of flagged in my mind is before you convince somebody why they need to buy this Bulgarian bag. So for example, Jack is asking, do people want this product? Um, before you convince somebody that they need this bag, you need to first convince them about, you know, how this movement, what you're illustrating of swinging the lamb over your shoulders, how this movement is, you know, considered in this day and age to be like the foremost functional movement for training, whatever, functional muscle muscle movements. And so I think, you know, you try to do the slow motion of swinging something around your shoulders is the greatest thing you can do because you're strengthening your whole body. Um, and you kind of just leave it there and you're relying solely on, you know, well, it's, it's the best move. It's the best movement because I, you know, coach Ivanov told you so, but if there was a way that you could somehow flesh this out with maybe some more specifics, and I don't know what they would look like, but um, you know, to come up with something kind of on the spot, some examples of like, uh, this, you know, whatever this motion, um, can increase muscle mass by X percent, you know, it's, it's not relevant to this specific example, but if you can flesh this out a little bit, um, I think that would do the work further of convincing your reader why they need to start integrating this movement, first of all, into their everyday workout routine. Um, so I think that's a spot where you could potentially do some more work. And then introducing the Bulgarian bag. I, you know, I love this. I think this is very cool, powerful tool, increased strength and muscular endurance of. Um, okay. I mean, again, you know, you're kind of just glazing over why th this movement works and you can glaze over it here so long as you did the work before of convincing people why this functional movement pattern is something that people need to integrate into their everyday workout routines to be a top athlete for example um, okay one of the this copyright really well um, is how he structured this. For those of you who are, have been following along um, since we started, did you notice how he chose a very intriguing, interesting story with some like, like some major, like, huh? In, like what? Whoa. Intrigue factor as a hook from the beginning. Use this story to illustrate um ultimately what he wants to say, which is that, you know, you need to integrate this movement pattern into your everyday workout routine. And we have the tool to help you do it called the Bulgarian bag. So started very broad. And then now he's going more and more and more narrow. And, you know, to the point where now he's at the section where he's demonstrating his credibility. He's, he's a lot more specific. He's delivering a lot of value. Like this is free information from like a world-class coach. By the time you get to the end of it, you know, he's basically going to give you everything that you need to know. You have everything. You're just missing the bag. And here is how you order the bag. And then if he structures his offer correctly, um, you know, there is maybe some urgency in there. There is, um, you know, some sort of price value proposition to where the the price of this thing seems just so much less than the value that you're going to be getting. Um, maybe he's going to be doing some offer stacking. He's going to throw in some other benefits. Um, maybe there's like a little training program, like a free video series training program from the coach that, that he offers. Um, but just the way that he structured that flow, starting with, you know, the story illustrating um, what he wants to say, which is ultimately, um, the Bulgarian bag is like the best tool to help you integrate whatever functional movement pattern. Maybe you want to give it a name. Is there, um, 
a name for this movement pattern? Can you assign a name to this movement pattern that will make it feel a lot more proprietary, a lot more um, important, a lot more convincing? And then, um, sorry, where was I going? So um, again, just the structure, very general, illustrating the Bulgarian bag is the tool that you need to help you um, integrate this functional movement pattern into your training program to become the top athlete, the best athlete in your field. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just taking a quick look at the comments. Um, yeah, so uh, again, Jack, it's lacking the unique mechanism, right? Yeah, so that's that's what I was talking about. You put the words to it. Um, it's It's the mechanism is, is there. We're talking about this movement pattern, this functional movement pattern, but, um, I had recommended fleshing this out a little bit more. And I like the idea of like giving it a unique name of like what this actual movement pattern is. You're talking about, you know, the way you describe it is like, oh yeah, it's the way that, you know, how the Bulgarians do it when after they win and then they put the lamb and they throw it over the shoulders. Um, it's that thing. Right. And so like the unique, mechanism there it um uh, we need to give it a name we need to talk about it a little bit more um let's see okay just seeing if there are any other relevant comments before continuing on um This is great uh, social proof, what other athletes are saying. Um, so with social proof, there there's like a progression of like most desired characteristics of a testimonial to least. Obviously, if you can get a photo, if you can get a first name and a last name, you know, their sign off and like a full testimonial like this. Vague testimonials, there's no attribution. Like, I don't really know who's saying these things. And so they carry a lot less weight. But if, you know, these are famous athletes, even if they're not famous, but you can say next to them, you know, two time national qualifier, you know, whatever. Um, all of that stuff is great social proof and um and credibility and pushes the reader along to you know having the feeling that they this is something that they need to get so they can start integrating it um let's let's take a look at the offers as you can see the bulgarian bag is very powerful i assure you, you're going to love it i recommend you act now supplies are limited and we're probably going to be sold out very soon take yours now starting only at 94 dollars click the button below and it will take you to the order page and just follow the instructions. There's no need to worry. The great materials used will make this um, this bag last forever. Um, but if something weird ever happens, you have a two year warranty. Order now. And then great, a frequently asked question. Okay, so this offer I would consider to be a weak offer. Um, you're basically just saying, you know, you can get this bag, it's 94 bucks. Take it or leave it. You can come back six months, still going to be 94 bucks. You know, you can come back whenever you feel like it. And, you know, nothing about this offer is going to change. Anytime you want, you can buy this bag for 94 bucks. So if I'm reading this, like, as a prospect, there's, like, you may, you did all of this work of convincing me that I need this thing. And then only to get to the offer and leave me feeling like it's, it's not urgent that I do it now, you know, love what you said, but I can always come back later and revisit if, you know, for whatever reason, I already, you know, spent 20 bucks on lunch today. It's been an expensive day. I don't want to spend $94, whatever. Um, so I would revisit this offer. I would consider, are there other benefits that you can throw in? Can you throw in um, a training series from this coach, that seems something that seems like something very valuable. You know, is there a workout plan that you can give me, even if it's just the basic write up? Um, videos would be cool about if I'm going to buy this bag, this is like the first time I'm hearing about it. Or is there a video series where you can demonstrate some of the moves 
I mean, obviously you're talking about one move, but maybe there are other exercises that I can do using this bag that would give me reassurance to buy it. If I'm going to buy this bag, I, I kind of need to know how to use it. Am I using it correctly? Maybe there's like a, a five point, um, technique, you know, a five point technique check, you know, make sure your feet are aligned shoulder width, toes pointed outward. Um, you know, maybe there's like, you know, a proper kinetic chain movement where I have to squat a certain way with a certain degree of the knee and then, you know, push through my hips and then, you know, and then rotate. You could do a guide, you know, a technique check, you could do videos. And then the idea here is um, you want to stack these benefits you know, and say, you know, this training series, we typically sell for, you know, 200 bucks, this report, this guide, the, you know, technique check, we typically sell for 39 bucks. Um, the, you know, the maybe some hand gloves or whatever to, you know, protect your hands. Maybe we sell those for 15 bucks. And, you know, all of this you can get today um, for a, you know, we typically would sell this for, you know, 500 bucks or whatever. You can get it today um, for a limited time starting only at $94. So, you know, the idea being that you're going to help overcome some objections that people might have of, you know, how do I do this? How do I use it? Am I doing it correctly? Um, so you'll, you'll overcome that with maybe your training series. And then more than that, you're just going to stack the benefits so much relative to the price that it makes the offer feel no brainer. And then, um, you know, we never want the urgency or the scarcity to be superficial. Like, you know, you don't want to come in here and say, we only have 30 remaining if in fact you don't have 30 remaining and you can produce as many as you need. Um, but if there is a way to manufacture some sort of urgency, if it's, you know, if you're running this around the holiday time times, a lot of times you can do, you can just justify, you know, simply um, running a discount or a promotion just because it's a holiday or, you know, just because, um, you know, Olympic training is starting in two weeks and you need to get your bag or whatever. And so we're doing a special limited time only, you know, discount. If there's a way to somehow incorporate that, I would, um, I would recommend doing, doing that to incorporate urgency. I would recommend trying to figure that out as well. Um, and then obviously another part of your offer is the two year warranty. I would flesh out with a line or two, I don't think you need any more. What does that actually mean? Uh, if it breaks, are you going to replace the whole bag um, for free? If I use it and I don't like it, can I return it? Um, what is, you know, what does that mean? But your warranty is really another tool that you can use to make your offer feel no brainer. You want to um, lower that barrier of entry so much that it's, it, the reader is just so compelled to get it right now, this moment, um, you know, because it's so cheap, because it's a limited time offer, because I can always return it, um, because, you know, there's, you're throwing in a bunch of other, you know, gummy bears. Um, you want them to be so compelled by this value that it makes the offer feel no brainer. Um, I really enjoyed this this copy. Um, what did, what did you guys think in the comments? Let me know. Is there anything else that you think, um, <laughs> that you think worked, didn't work, um, uh, beyond had a question. Does adding the word probably in this offer lower the sense of urgency? Um, I did not see the word probably supplies are limited. Oh, I didn't even see that. Um, but we're probably going to be sold out very soon. Yeah. That's not very convincing. Um, I, I did not see that, but that feels pretty manufactured and that feels fake and it feels gimmicky and now I don't trust you, you know? And so don't include it if it's not real. Um, if there's a way to make it real, I would suggest, suggest doing that. What do you mean by supplies are limited? Um, you know, are they selling fast? 
you can kind of infer that without saying we're going to be sold out pretty soon. You can say, you know, supplies are limited. We only have 500 bags and we're selling very fast. You know, it's a way to kind of imply that you're going to be sold out soon without saying we're probably going to be sold out soon. So yeah, good, good point there. Um, Awesome. Oh, Laura, was this, okay, I'm working on offer creation with a client and this is so, so helpful. Yeah, this is, this is very cool. Um, all right. So let's move on to the next one. I hope that was helpful. Um, whoever shared that, please return next time with some more uh, funky, fun Bulgarian copy. I thought that was, that uh, was a lot of fun. I hadn't read one like that before. Okay, so let's get into the next piece. So this is five Cairo Practor, I'm assuming, funnel nurturing emails. So the idea, life sucks, um, being in this much pain. Let's get you out of it. Bring up the pain points here. Um, so this looks like an email. Yes, email one, email two, if the copywriter is in attendance and is watching, if you could throw in some more context into the chat, I think that would be most helpful for everyone. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just going to start reading it. Email one, subject line. This will get much worse if not taken care of quickly. Hmm. Okay. Ouch, that seriously hurts. I must have slept wrong again. Nope, that's your crooked spine. If you've ever felt like or even said something along the lines of crap, when I move my head too far left, that really pinches. Woke up and couldn't get back to bed. That sharp pain kept me up late. My back hurts when I run. Don't fret. You're in the same boat many of our clients were before they uh, before starting care with us. Unfortunately, thousands of people suffering from similar discomforts have come to us relaying the same sorts of messages Know that these everyday pains aren't normal and that you deserve better. Although these pains may be mild now, they could become debilitating if not taken care of sooner rather than later. And not to scare you, but if not taking care of these problems, uh, if not taking care of these problems often do become worse, much worse. The good news is that you've come in early. Your diagnosis is definitely something we can treat. Your custom tailored wellness plan awaits. Begin rejuvenation with your personal path to vibrant living now. We designed this plan specifically for you after the x-rays we took during your free wellness visit. Okay. So um, let me check the chat real quick to see if the copywriter is here. Um, it's a nurturing sequence for a funnel. Okay. They saw the Facebook ad, clicked it, scheduled a free consultation on the landing page and didn't move forward with the care, even though... Okay, um, sorry, I'm reading this. Okay, Breezy, so the PS made me think that this is somebody who has already not only op opted in, but they scheduled a visit with you, and then they just did not follow up with your plan for extended care. Is that correct? Um, while you answer that... Let's just, let's get into the meat of it. So um, again, I'm assuming that this person, they came to a clinic, they did their, you know, free initial visit or whatever, and then they did not continue with the custom tailored wellness plan, you know, for whatever reason. So um, I've been here. I, you know, I've been... A, prospect for a setup like this, went to a chiropractor, got checked out, you know, they gave me some feedback on potentially what was wrong with me and then, you know, sat me down and were like, you know, this, this is what's going on and this is what we think it'll take to fix you, how many visits, you know, and then the potential cost. Usually um, in a situation like this, you have to understand that the prospect has already come to terms with the fact that they're in pain and that they think they need chiropractic and they've actually 
you know, gone to you and had a, an initial trial session. So you don't need to resell me on this idea again that I'm in pain, that my spine hurts, that, you know, maybe I have said one of these things or haven't. And if I haven't, maybe, you know, you don't want people to think, oh, this isn't relevant to me. I didn't, you know, I don't have a back thing or a neck thing. I got like a really weird knee thing, whatever. So you, like you don't, you're wasting a lot of this really precious real estate reselling me on these ideas that, you know, got me through your door in the first place. I've already come through your door. I'm already here and I already signed up. My objections at this point are different. My objection could have been price related. Your services are just way too expensive. Um, it could have been that, you know, maybe I, um, I had questions about the actual treatment plan. Um, maybe I didn't think it worked for me. So you got to try to understand and you can get this by talking with your client. Um, like what's the feedback you get from people? You can ask them this question. What's the feedback you get from people who ultimately don't sign up with you? Is it price? Usually that's the biggest one. Um, so if I am, if I'm going to be nurturing leads, people who have already, um, come in, let me see, hold on, just pause that thought. Um, Breezy's given us some more context. The x-rays, uh, doctors saw they needed it. And exactly, yeah, it's working on behavioral-based triggers. Okay. So I think my assumptions about this are correct. And yeah, exactly. Um, this first email works a lot better if you send someone who hasn't already found your service and needs um, direction finding you. Exactly. And so at this page... If I'm nurturing these leads, people who have come into my office and have just failed to sign up for a plan, what are their objections? I'm hitting those objections head on, starting with like price, for example. Um, and you never want to be like, oh, hey, I offered you this price, but actually I can offer you, you know, a lesser price right out the gate because it just, that just feels scammy. Um, like if my chiropractor came back and was like, yeah, you know, I said it was 125 a session, but actually, you know, I'll do it for 90. That's not something that I would, you know, put in an email and, and put out in the world. But, um, I, you know, I would find a way to maybe address price. And after talking to your chiropractor, um, addressing all of those, those objections kind of one by one in each, in each email. Um, so I think all of this, again, this is for really kind of cold, colder leads. Your leads are really hot. They, they've already been in. Um, so let's see. So when I got to this copy, it was the first time that I realized, oh, you're, you know, in this right here, oh, you're talking to somebody who has already been in. I think that's a good follow-up that's a good point for a follow-up email where it makes me feel like you've actually sat down and you've custom tailored a wellness plan for me so maybe that first visit is more diagnostic you've done all you've done all of the x-rays um everything you needed but maybe and maybe the doctor gave me a couple tips or whatever but in terms of this custom tailored wellness plan to restore my you know, my spine, my neck or whatever, this is potentially something that could move a prospect to coming back in or to signing up or, or whatever. And, um, I think this is a good opportunity, a good place to more or less start where it feels very personalized, like, Hey, great news. Thanks for visiting the office the other day. Um, the doctor's completed your custom tailored wellness plan and, you know, this is what he proposes. And then, you know, click. Remember, the point of an email is always to get a click. Is it, and in this case, it might be to click to sign up for your subsequent visit, to click to call us if you have questions, to click to order now. Um, but you are ultimately wanting to move the prospect um, to re-engage with you. And in this, in this case, I don't know, we you know what this click points to. Um, maybe it's, it's a, you know, a prescription 
not a little, a little like, you know, go get your meds prescription, but it's like, you know, you, you pick it up and it's like, oh, you know, hey, so-and-so, you know, the doctor, you know, diagnosis this um, specific plan, you know, five visits, you know, bundled discount X price for five visits. Um, and then it's like, you know, this is what the doctor believes that um, will be required to basically restore you to full health come in today, you know, call today to schedule your, your appointment. Um, it, I like that it's a lot more, it, it is very personalized. It's addressing me, the fact that I was just there. It makes me feel like, wow, like the doctor actually custom tailored this wellness plan for me. It makes me feel, you know, moved enough to kind of take that micro commitment of clicking. And then, you know, if I have some more specifics and you're overcoming things that are my objections, like price, um, and how many, you know, how much time is this going to take? Like, I don't want to keep, I don't want to feel like I have to go for the six months or whatever. Maybe you're like five visits, a few tweaks, you're good, you know, just to get somebody in the door, um, again, and starting with your program or, you know, having a couple treatments that is ultimately what you want. You want to re-engage them. You want, um, to get them through the door and you start by making that micro commitment with the click. And you can do that with custom tailoring, you know, this plan, get the kit, click, and then you want to move them along to the call to schedule that first appointment, um, which you can do subsequently on the next page. So I, I don't think you need more, more than that. Um, like if this is signed off and coming from the secretary of this office, like I'm good with that. Or if it's coming from the doctor himself, like, you know, Hey, Lindsay, you know, thanks for coming in the other day. Good news. Your diagnosis is, you know, something we can definitely treat. We see it all the time your custom tailored wellness plan awaits, you know, click here to check it out. It feels super personalized, but it can be totally templated. Um, it can be made to be templated. So I don't think for the audience that you are targeting that you need much more than, than that. Um, let's go to email two. When your day is back with a healthy spine in less than a month, how one event led you to never walking up the, uh, to, sorry, how one event led you to never waking up the same ever again. Imagine the sun gently beaming on your face as you wake up to the tranquil sounds of birds chirping. You scoot to the end of your bed and give a large, well-rested stretch before getting up and beelining it to the coffee maker. Something is different. The sharp pain in your back is nearly gone. You feel as if waking up on clouds while descending downstairs. Your level of neck and back discomfort are virtually zero. It feels like you've died and gone to heaven, but no, the Eden is real. This isn't some hidden grove only attainable by doubling down your questionable at best prescription. These are the results of thousands who have visited and proceeded with best chiral world's optimal living path. Hear what some of our patients are saying. Cara D, the approach here is different and it works. After visiting over half a dozen chiropractors, I've never seen one that compares to Dr. Smith and his team. I've been living with neck pain that was uh, pretty dang severe. So great testimonials, so on and so forth. I'm in the best health I've ever been now that I can um, run pain free. Join thousands in optimal living today. So yes, I think you sniffed out exactly what I would do in email too. So you know, first objection is probably going to be price. I think if you can do something on a landing page that offers some sort of bundled discount, you know, sign up today. It's only, you know, it's going to be five sessions for this program. X price, you can lower it. You can give a bundled discount. It's an easy way to lower the price and make it not seem like schmarmy, right? Um, and and then the next one objection that you you want to overcome is like, is this doctor legit? Is he actually going to help me? Is he skilled enough to, you know, do what he told me he could in the first initial visit? Um, you need, you know, you're, you're wanting to overcome the objection of the, the doctor himself is, is he actually a trusted person? Do you trust him? And one of the best ways to do that is through social proof. And so, um, Again, I think you're doing too much in this lead here and, you know, trying to like, this is just kind of seems like you're trying to like paint a story or 
tell us a story for the sake of telling a story. Um, sharp pain in your back is nearly gone. Like some of this stuff may not be relevant to the, the prospect and it's wasting a lot of really valuable space, wasting a lot of the prospect's time asking them to have to kind of read through this pretend scenario that you're, you've created. I think that you could get right into the meat again um, with these testimonials. Because that's ultimately what you need to do in this email is convince the reader why this doctor is is the one to go with. They've already decided they need chiropractor, a chiropractic. They just haven't committed yet. And why haven't they committed? Was it a price thing? Was it just that they, they weren't sure about the doctor? Well, how do you overcome that? You know, social proof. And so with this second email, I would just get right into, um, you know, hey, hey, Lindsay, um, you know, um, and I, maybe you could tell a story. Is there a story? So your client, can you get us rather than telling this like make believe story, can you get a story from Kara D from Martin L from Jeff S ask your client about his most successful patient. Like the, the thing, you know, all of these chiropractors, they have crazy success stories about, you know, so-and-so was in a car accident, had three, you know, herniated discs and, couldn't, you know, was bedridden and couldn't put a sock on, you know, because he was in so much pain in his lower lumbar or whatever. And, you know, within six sessions, um, he was out playing tennis again, totally pain-free. That is the sort of stuff that your prospect wants to hear. Not these like imaginary hypotheticals could not be true. Maybe it doesn't apply to me, but like real life people who have gone to this doctor and seen successes. And if you're doing this correctly, you are illustrating how easy it is, how cost efficient it is. So, you know, maybe that person with, you know, the terrible lower back pain was going to physical therapy, you know, had been to 24 physical therapy sessions and was spending so much money. And then he went to, you know, Dr. Cairo and with quick, you know, adjustment, few adjustments, five sessions, he was virtually pain-free. Um, that's the, sto that is the sort of story that I would lead out with. And then, you know, you can back it up and just like Cara D, you know, take it from Martin L, Jeff S. And then again, it is just that overwhelming sense of proof of, um, like this Dr. Smith knows what he's talking about because dozens and dozens of people have gone. And then, um, give like this is a this is a very uh non-specific action to take i don't know what like is this you you need the person to click to call they need to call click to call to set up their appointment or if you want to send them again to view their own custom wellness plan um you know maybe you have if you if you can segment it there's you know people who have clicked the link and visit, viewed their wellness plan you may want to push them to call people who have not opened the email or um clicked but did not take action you can you know push them to take another action which is to or like maybe they didn't view their plan you can push them to that link as well so you can split test that and see um you know which one which one works best to you can try to segment that list if that's something a service that you can you feel you you can provide or at least recommend um, that they do. That's a good way for you to demonstrate your, you know, marketing ability. Um, leave it to them to figure out, you know, the marketing ability if you want and offer them two versions um, or just, you know, give a more specific call to take, which, you know, is to ultimately call and get in on your next session. Um Give me a second. Yeah, um, Amon, does it still count as nurturing if they've already made it to the consultation? Um, I mean, you're ultimately, you can call it, call it whatever you want. Typically when we talk about nurturing, we're talking about, you know, like a cold lead who has come in. They're pretty unfamiliar with you. They have 
they don't know what you do, what you're about. And so the types of things that you're, you're dripping to them are, um, more presenting them solutions that, you know, maybe they, they, they haven't heard of, or they didn't know you do, or, um, you know, you're just talking to somebody who's a lot more familiar. You're doing that type of nurturing, but I would still consider it nurturing if you had somebody who's a little warmer and in the chiropractor world, that's somebody who is either called or who has visited, but just hasn't, um, you know, followed up with a plan. Um, I think you, you can still consider that nurturing. The point is that you're just having totally different conversations with them along the lines of like the, you know, the two that I just, that I just talked about. Um, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. The CTA doesn't need to be wishy-washy. Yeah. you you definitely don't want your CTA wishy-washy. You want it super specific. Um, and like, don't be afraid to say things like, you know, you haven't signed up and like, uh, you know, we noticed you haven't signed up or you haven't viewed your plan, you know, um, call, you know, call today with questions or whatever. So like be very, very specific at this stage of the game, because you know a lot about these people already. You already know that they're interested in your services. You already know that they, they need chiropractic. You already know that they're in pain and you can, you know, more or less guess at like what type of pain they're in. And so like, you don't need to give this like very general, a call to action. Um, you can, you can be super specific with it. Okay. All right. We've been on this one for a while now. So we're going to move on to the, the next. Let's see. Okay. Can everyone see? I want to give you high level strategies to increase your conversions. All right. Well, whoever submitted the five chiro funnel, I hope that's help. That's helpful. I see that you, there are emails three and four as well in there, but in the interest of time to get through and try to help as many people as we can, um, we're going to save it there. But next week, if you want us to look at the other ones after kind of taking our feedback, applying it, um, resubmit it and we'll do it again. Okay. So this is a copy of a landing page for my email list and newsletter. All right. Sorry, my voice is getting shot. Um, nowhere else can you get this kind of health industry tailored value delivered straight to your inbox. I want to give you high level strategies to increase your conversions for free. Huh. Join the ranks of other successful health business owners. Here's what happens when you join Cody's copywriting connection. Twice a month, I share updates on what's happening in my world. Plus valuable information I've come across that's worth sharing. You can look forward to a wide range of insights related to your health and wellness business, including mindset, marketing ideas, copywriting techniques, winning content strategies, fresh perspectives to help you grow and excel online, up-to-date industry news and trends for the health industry. By the way, it's all GMO free, cage free spam free and risk free just the way you like it. If for any reason you want to go, you can unsubscribe at any time, but I doubt it because I share top shelf level stuff, things that I could charge a boatload for, but that's not what this is about. While most people use email only to sell you stuff, I do things a lot differently. Yes, there's an occasional invitation to invest in your business, but that's not the purpose of this newsletter. You only uh, you'll only receive helpful content about the things you want a need to thrive online. If you're ready to join the others who have put their stake in the ground to become the best in their industry, then sign up below. Oh, by the way, since I will be sharing deeply personal things about myself, it would only feel right if I knew some things about you. After you sign up, would you mind filling out two simple questions? It would mean the world to me and take you less time than sitting at a stoplight. Congratulations on taking this step. Your online success awaits. Join the ranks of other health business owners. Okay. <laughs> so, um, again, we're missing a little bit of context. Um, 
But Cody of the Copywriting Connection, if you're on, please provide a bit of context about what you're about. Um, I'm going to make some assumptions here and then give some feedback based on those assumptions. So I hope it's relevant to the copywriter. But um, my, I'm assuming that Cody, he is, um, he's a copywriter and marketer and just general uh, consultant to health business owners. And he wants to create a list so that he can drip them information and ultimately um, over time uh, persuade them, compel them to to uh, hire him as a consultant for their specific business in a lot of different capacities. It could be, you know, to, to consult on building an email list, to consult on products, to consult on offers or whatever. Um, I knew somebody who did this uh, not for health um, business owners, but for dentists. And, you know, this person was is extreme an extremely skilled marketer and copywriter and he wanted to you know build an email list of local dentists and he basically created a newsletter where he was telling them you know all of the things all of the marketing tricks and copywriting strategies that they're not implementing in their business that's you know that's causing them to leave money on the table and um, and then ultimately, you know, these people come to value the information you're sharing so much that they're they get to a point where they're just like, okay, I just like I want to hire you for my business so that you rather than getting this very you know generic general advice that you're giving your email letter, you can speak direct directly to my business's needs and pain points and you can fix them for me. And then, you know, they put you on a very expensive retainer, and you go in and you're just like a Swiss army knife, you know, marketing ninja and you create a newsletter for them and, you know, for that client and you um, help them develop funnels and, you know, strategies, lead gen. So um, I love this idea. I think that unfortunately, um, Cody, I think you're, you're just missing, um, some points. The biggest point that I saw is like, who are you? Who's Cody of Copywriting Connection? And you're telling me that you're, you know, you offer all of these things and you're great at what you do, but like, I don't see anywhere on here um, your, like your bio and your track record of success and who you've worked with that, um, you know, you, quadrupled their business in a year you you know like I don't I don't know anything about you other than that you are Cody of Cody's copywriting connection and so if I'm operating a health business um and you know I I am generally interested in growing my business and know that I need marketing and know that I need you know leads and convert you know this thing you know, high level strategies to increase conversion, whatever that means. Um, like I, I want to be convinced that you are the person to help me do it. And so, you know, e even if this is not um, ordering, hiring you as a consultant, like if, if I'm going to give you my email address and sign up for your email list, then I need to be convinced that you actually know what you're doing. Rod. I'm back. Hey. I'm so sorry that went over. You're back. That's okay. No worries. Um, sucks for you though, because you missed, you know, what might've been the most fun critique that we've seen in a while, which, um, which was about throwing lambs over our shoulders and doing lambs? squats, squats and stuff. And it was awesome. You missed it. Who's, like, who's like a little this? lamb. I don't remember who it was, but I'll send you the copy after. Um, or you can watch my take of it. That <laughs> in, sounds fun as shit. In post. But yeah, it was fun. Um, and we just moved on to this one. Cody of uh, Cody's Copywriting Connection okay. is, um, this is a landing page for his email list and newsletter. If you want to read through it really fast, I am just starting to give my feedback. Okay. My first bit, bit of which is I have no clue who uh, Cody of Copywriting Connection is as well. And the other thing, Cody, about this is like you're talking to 
health business owners about a copywriting connection. Like what, I'm a health business coach. I don't know what copywriting is. I have no clue if that's something I need for my business. Like I know what marketing is, but like what's copywriting? Is it just articles online? You know, like is it SE SEO, which I have am told from all of my friends that I need to do. So um, I don't know what this is. So Cody, I would recommend that you come up with um, the name, a specific name for your newsletter. And then I would suggest that you tailor it to give it a name that speaks directly to health business owners. Is it the health, um, health business marketing collective? Is it, um, you know, uh, whatever, a special report called, you know, how to scale your health business overnight. Like that's the terrible, but make it about, um, the health business particularly not about you know copywriting copywriting connection makes me sound like you're you're getting together with copywriters um let's see i'm seeing very quickly if cody is here and given us any context i do not see any context on a quick skim um so that's my first bit um i don't think you you know you need to well, you could come out and say, so twice a month, I share what's happening in my world, plus valuable information I've come across that's worth sharing. You can look forward to a wide range of insights related to your health, wellness, business. Again, none of this is relevant to me if I have no clue um, who you are or what you can offer me. And even in, you know, if I were to just look at this stuff, I have no clue if that it's about, that it is about health businesses that you're talking about health businesses. You just seem like a guy who's, who seems to think he has a lot of information to share um, about marketing and copywriting, um, you know, but that you only mention here is for the health industry. So um, one way you could easily change this is, hey, I'm Cody from, you know, the health health business collective um where you know in the past six months i've helped i've helped five health businesses scale to seven figures and um want to invite you to join our exclusive circle um where every where twice a month I um, give specific information that about, I give uh, specific advice to health business owners on ways that they can effectively scale their health businesses, including bullets. Rather than saying mindset, marketing ideas, copywriting techniques, these just very generic terms, give me some like, do some copywriting and write some bullets. What is there a trick that, um, you know, for getting leads that you can give a name to and, and talk about that. Is there, um, a, you know, a huge low hanging piece of fruit that most, most health business owners are missing or whatever. So, Rather than just do these very generic categories, actually write some sales bu bullets about the sort of things that you're going to teach me. Um, Rod, are you all caught up? Yes. Okay. Do um, you want to chime in? Yeah. I think Go for it. I, I definitely agree with Lindsay here. It feels very generic. And... I mean, if I'm a health owner, even if I was a, a different copywriter, like, and you were just selling copywriting or marketing strategies, like, it, it feels very seamy. The, like, very, very hard to agree on, like, mixing the sort of services and, like, or not services, like, the topics you're talking about. Like, I don't care if you're going to talk about mindset. Tell me about how you're going to, you know, give me strategies about mindset stuff that's going to directly benefit what I'm trying to do. Um, I, if I'm, if I own a health list, I don't know why I care about mindset. Are you thinking that like, 
yeah. I need to help my mindset. You know, yeah. Is that a problem for my customers? And you're trying to help me like talk about that. Like it's just very, very unclear. And the lack yeah. of clarity then drives me to think, oh, this is just a generic thing, which means it's not specific, which means it can mean anything, which means I don't have to care about it is yeah. how my brain processes that. So definitely hone in on some, like on the specifics here because without it. Yeah. Do you possible. have a favorite, do you have a favorite scheduling tool that, you know, that efficiently gets client helps clients set up their first appointment? Do you have, um, you know, uh, an email warm up sequence that you've used and tested, you know, across 180 days, that's, you know, got a X percent conversion rate. Do you have, um, do you have other tools that you can talk about for, you know, increasing efficiency, um, decreasing overhead, all the things that like a, an actual business owner is interested in doing increasing margins. Like those are the things that a business owner wants. They want more customers, fewer expenses, more efficiency. Um, what else does a business owner want? They, they want to, you know, they want their business to run by themselves so they can go play golf. Um, True. You know, like all stuff like that. So think about what it is that, that these people want. And then that's, that's ultimately kind of what you want to hit on with these mm -hmm. bullets. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I, I, I struggle with this copy because there's just a lot of like telling from you, Cody, about just like, I'm great. I'm all these things. And, you know, I, I'm the best. I, I share top shelf level stuff, but there's nothing in here that is showing me um, that's like giving me convincing proof that you are who and what you say you are. Um, yeah. So I think that's like the first thing. And if you can do that, and if you have a successful, um, if you have a successful track record of helping scale health businesses that you can actually point to, the selling is going to do it itself. And you aren't going to yeah. have to try very hard because as soon as you start doing that, I scaled this business, I scaled this business, I helped this business reduce their overhead. You know, I increased their, this business's margins by this much. It, like the second you start doing that, it's going to immediately become par apparent to your prospect that like, oh, okay, this is the guy that I need to hear from and I need to learn from. And oh, amazing. He has a free, e he has a free newsletter where he actually like tells us all of this stuff. Awesome. Um, and so like, you don't need to try much harder than that. If you're like new and you don't have that, um, and you still want to build an email list of health business coaches because you want to get into this niche and you want to start getting jobs from these sorts of people. Don't say that you're is all, you know, you're so great and all of this and make it, excuse me, this kombucha is like giving me a hard time. Um, make it about specifically the type of information that you are going to give these business people. So the primary example of that is kind of like what we talked about in these bullets. Um, I'm assuming if you want to enter this niche, even if you don't have experience, you've done a lot of research, I hope, about it, and you've studied it, and you can actually contribute some really helpful information. Uh, um, and I would assume that if you're to the point where you're getting ready to build an email list, maybe you have your first few newsletters carved out. What are you actually going to be teaching these people? Um, and so like, that's where I would put, put the, the work into fleshing out, um, Hey, there's this thing, you know, I'm the founder of the health, health business circle, exclusive circle, whatever you want to call it, give it a name, um, where we help health business owners like yourself scale their businesses, minimize, you know, and maximize efficiency, minimize overhead. Um, think otherwise, and of course, with those bullets. Uh, 
have to add on this one. I don't think there's Are much you, else to say. You might be lagging a little bit, unless that's me. Um, I'm probably lagging. There was that storm. Okay. Um, I, think you're, I, I think you're better now. Am I better now? Okay. Yeah. I don't have anything else to add on this one. I mm -hmm. think that basically covers it. So yeah. if you're good, I'm going to move on to the next. I have one thing. Um, yeah. I think one um, one thing always keep in mind is that when you're researching for your copy, don't just research you know background info for the offer, but also make sure that you're researching other kinds of copy. One very easy thing you can do to improve this is just go to YouTube, go to TikTok. You will surely get targeted with ads or you know guru -y type stuff. It doesn't matter what it's for. It could be copywriting, it could be drop shipping, it could be real estate, whatever. Click those ads. Almost all of them will send you to a page that is something along these lines where it's big header. I want you to do this thing, sign up for free, whatever. The format that those, that those pages tend to use is like lots and lots of proof up front, lots of claims. Yeah. They'll make similar types of claims to the ones that you're trying to make here. You know, they may have proof that you don't have, so don't lie about it if you don't. But you can just mimic the format of those and it will, it will send you a long way in terms of improving this. Yeah. I can't stress enough. If you don't have the experience uh, and the proof to talk to, don't pretend, please, and don't try to force it. It just it is just is so obvious. Um, if you're people who have a track record of success, they are talking about it because it's just the obvious thing to do. It's the one of the best ways to sell and convince other people to take action. Yeah. Um, and so, by not having it, it is obvious that. Um, you know, it, it just kind of sniffs of inexperience and to kind of overcome that you have to do exactly what we said, which is to lean more into the very specific, um, benefits that you're going to deliver, um, through your, you know, your newsletter, yeah. which can be a number of marketing strategies to increase conversions and whatnot. <laughs> okay. Um, on to the next. Next one. Next one. Um, I get a jet at five. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. I I can actually go for a bit. I just had a bunch okay. of stuff get canceled over, so I can finish these up if you. Or we can either end it at five, or I can do the rest of this big backlog. I will leave that up to you. Um, okay. I I just you know I get a jet as I do yeah. at five o'clock. So, um, this this may be my last one. Let's see how we go. Therapist homepage. Um, oh, yeah. Due to time difference, won't be on the live stream, but we'll catch the rewatch. Thank you. Okay, hero section. This is a homepage for a therapist. You don't have to carry the burden of pain alone. Relief is only a message away. Telehealth online or in-person sessions in Bellevue, Washington. We bring clarity to life's challenging puzzle pieces. Overwhelmed by pain and frustration, you feel stuck in an endless cycle of darkness where life appears bleak and uncertain. Our compassionate approach helps you untangle the complexities, provide clarity, and assists you in healing and creating lasting positive change. Our process, imagine the difference it would make in achieving your goals if you had the guidance and assistance of a trusted, experienced therapist. Your search for therapists in Bellevue ends here. We understand the importance of time. So there's prompt acceptance, trust, and support, just like a, you know, covering um, the benefits of the service in this, like, you know, this little grid here. Mm -hmm. Well-being is, your well-beings are focused, um, you know, confidential, blah, 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 get in fast. Okay. How can we help you? Um, and then, like, about the services. So, Couples and family counseling, trauma counseling, LGBTQ counseling. Oh, and then Jennifer. Hi, I'm Jennifer, a licensed therapist in Washington, helping families, trauma victims, and L LGBTQ clients. Through serving thousands of clients over the last 15 years, I have found that an integrative multimodality approach works best to adapt the layered complexity of your world and help you heal and thrive. As such, 
besides um, CBT, I'm also a certified therapist in Gestalt therapy, EMDR therapy, family systems therapy, and lifespan integration. I'm committed to providing a safe and supportive space for you to explore your thoughts, feelings, and experiences. Learn more. Let's work together to help you progress and th thrive. Book your appointment. Okay. Thoughts? Uh, you know, it's pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is it's refreshing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny. I've actually written copy for um, not better help, but like kind of online therapy services before. And so a lot of this stuff is very familiar to me. Mm -hmm. I think in particular, it's really good that you are calling out the specific therapy modalities that you're specialized in or your clients yes. specialize in um, because people are looking for that. That will come up on Google. That will come up when they search on the page. You're highlighting those things. That's great. Um, you know, the, all the stuff about the sort of quality of service, expectations, confidentiality, very, very um, good to talk about. I might even like in this trust and support thing change this to something specifically calling out confidentiality because that's something that people worry about a lot. Um, you know, the different types of therapy. Good, yeah. good shit. Um, I like that they also had the you know presence of mind to lead with all of these things before they get into the background and who is the therapist, whatever, because no one cares about the therapist until they know what the therapist can do for them. Exactly. So somebody who's Googling therapy in Bellevue, they're going to click on a link and like they immediately want to see, uh, okay, this is, this is like a me and my husband thing or, you know, or me and my wife thing or whatever. And they need to see couples and family counseling. Okay. This immediately applies or they need to see trauma counseling applies or doesn't, you know, so they need to see like the thing that they're, they're looking for. And then I think like, I, I would almost, um, try to elevate and highlight these a little more like Rod. Um, yeah. You like these, but another thing that people do that I've done in the past, if I'm looking for a very specific modality, like that's the thing I'm Googling. Like mm -hmm. I'm looking for an EMDR therapist, for example, in my yeah. area. And so I'm typing EMDR and if it's like buried in here, I could potentially miss it. And so I would find some way, you know, similar to this, or similar to this, like I would have the modalities um, up high and visually visible, visually highlighted in a way, because I, I do think that a lot of people are familiar enough with maybe the type of modality that they're looking for. And um, it, it is thing, a thing that people are Googling and seeking out and you yeah. don't want them to miss it. I agree. Um, yeah. And I just generally say that you could elevate the entire section, not even just that line above the art process thing, because similar to the bio, basically, no yeah. one really cares about the process until they know that you can help them with a specific thing. So yep. absolutely agree. Yeah. Um, hero section. This is above the fold. People click um, an ad or whatever, and then they land on this page. You don't want to invite them to just do more clicking and like just more clicking. You want to make it so easy and so apparent that they need to um, schedule their first appointment. This could yeah. be a link to an online calendar to book um, an open slot through Calend Calendly, like the app for integrating provider um, availability with my availability, people can book immediately, or, um, you can click to call. Like if I, if I'm on my phone, which a lot of people are, um, you know, when they're searching out a therapist, they're on their phone and, you know, if you can easily make it, um, there's a button there and you click to call and then they can ask whatever questions they want. They can book, you know, do you have EMDR therapy? Um, it's just easy. So you want this like first button on the top. I would make this first button a uh, click to call um, or a click to book. And then top right, I would also have another button that's like the phone number for just ease of that call to action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, I, I, okay. Yeah, and I think a, some of this too is going to be when you make a page like this, just be really mindful of the design. Don't make like these yeah. boxes, for example, for example, in the hero section, like don't make them so 
big and bulky, make them pretty to look at, make it make it feel easy to read because it is a lot of information, but it can feel really easy to get through or a complete slog depending on how you choose to present it. So just be a little bit mindful of that. I also, um, I've designed a lot of like landing pages like this for just local businesses. Um, if you're not careful, they can get like really wordy, a lot of like big wall, big walls of text that you have to wade through. Um, like you've got to remember that by the time like people are seeking out your service, like especially therapy, it's somebody who's pretty desperate to talk to somebody or to schedule an appointment or to like the last thing you want to do is invite them to read unnecessary information. And so like, I can't stress this enough. You have to go through and just cut, 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 cut as much as you can. Um, words, extraneous words that just don't matter at all. Um, and try to make it as streamlined uh, and simple as possible. You know, like you've got f full sentences here. They're spanning like five lines, um, you know, within this grid. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, it's a lot to ask people to um, consume all of this information. It's helpful, you know, but like everybody knows what couples and family counseling is. You know, like you don't, maybe you don't need to go into this so much. You need help you know? with flights. Yeah. Or communication, like, you know. Um, or even this, like, okay, this is about couples and family counseling. So we, we are certified in family systems therapy, which helps individuals, couples, and families resolve conflicts and improve relationships by understanding the layered dynamics of the family as a whole. Um, how could you streamline that? Uh, okay. So cut first sentence, cut the second sentence we are certified in family system therapy um period period um we like to resolve improve conflict. or started. resolve conflict and improve the family relationship that's it yeah like it's as easy as that yeah because again these are things that people are going to be looking for and if they're looking for them they know what they are and if they yeah. are looking for them they're not gonna care usually like, no one gets to a therapy landing page or, like after having clicked on it after having searched for it and then see something that they didn't know existed and it's like oh yeah i want that so you know signals to the people who you're trying to talk to that it's the thing that they think it is and then move on um also you could have a couple more ctas in here so like, yeah definitely at the very top um instead of that learn more that is just a, you know, book now, CTA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could have after the, we bring clarity to life's challenging puzzle pieces, whatever, CTA. Then you have the, the you know, couples, family, whatever, trauma, LGBTQ section, CTA. You know, just after every sort of like completed thought, everything that someone might think to look for, mm -hmm. have a CTA. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, other than that, I think this is pretty good. I hope that this copywriter um, has also discussed running ads, uh, yes. Google search ads for this client. If you haven't, check out uh, Copy That's book, No Man's Niche, where we show you exactly how to do that. This yeah. seems like the perfect opportunity to partner with a local business owner, build a landing page for them, drive traffic and prospective clients to them and negotiate some sort of rev share deal or get paid on an ongoing monthly retainer. Yeah. Um, and in that book, No Man's Niche, we show you exactly how to do it. I, you know, we basically go through three case studies and like include screenshots of our Google ads and exactly what to include on your landing page and where to put what. And I mean, it's everything strategy from how to pick a niche how to pick a client, how to negotiate deals, how to structure deals. Um, um, do that. Hey, you're, you're cutting out a little bit, Lindsay. And by a little bit, I mean you're a complete robot. Yeah. Um, it's the storm. And, uh, sorry. It's five o'clock. I'm going to go. <laughs> it's time. Stop. God like, is saying. Yeah, it's time. 
it was fun. Okay. Uh, take it from here, Rob. Um, guys, thanks a lot. I hope it was helpful. I decide, um, as I was here, and um, I know Rod's going to lift some goods. Let's hope so. Stay dry. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye. Oh, shit. I have to pull this up now. Okay, so it is just me and you guys. Um, let me pull up that copy again. Share screen. Um, all right, great. So you guys can see what I'm looking at. Um, there's one last thing to add onto this before we move on to the next piece of copy. Um, I, there is one inconsistency I just want to point out in your wording up here you're talking about we as in the clinic the office whatever we are process we understand at our clinic we do this 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 this, this. that's fine uh, but then down here you introduce the office as just jennifer a singular person um and then start talking about i etc cetera, etc cetera, et cetera. either one is fine make sure that it feels consistent when you're doing that if it's just an office run by one person you can either change all the stuff to I, or you could just shorten these things to bring clarity to life's challenging puzzle pieces alone, the process, services we offer, services I offer, services offered, et cetera. It's not a huge deal, but note but that is something that is inconsistent. So make sure that you touch that up before you present it to your client or use it. Um, Right, so moving on, and let me just check real quick to make sure I'm not double dipping on these. So I'm going to do that. Nutrition bar. Okay. So the next one is going to be V3 TF MIT. No idea what that means. Um, from somebody. Anyway, um, so pinned top banner, accepting new clients, call here or, or click here or call to schedule appointment. Man up and talk about it. Okay, so this is um, a revised version of Evan's therapy. Uh, <laughs> therapy uh, page from last time. So a similar sort of niche, um, different location, um, different sort of style. And so this will actually be really good for comparison because we can go back and forth here a little bit. Um, right, so at, man up and talk about it. As in took my line, I love it, love to see it. Um, individual counseling for men in person, in Nashville, in remote throughout Tennessee. Um, Schedule a call, CTA, we love it. Um, so similar hero sort of section, trauma, PTSD, makes experience trauma too. Even admitting this can induce feelings of guilt and shame. Actually dealing with it is a whole other ball game. Experience relief with step-by-step -step action plan. Come to terms with your trauma on your own terms. So let's see, what am I doing here? Okay, suggesting that. Great. So it's double. Oh, I guess it's not double. Okay. It's, it's a little awkward, so just you know, pay attention to that. Um, anger. It's okay to feel anger. It's when we bottle our anger up that it can burst out unexpectedly. This can be dangerous and frightening. Avoid losing control by gathering tools that identify triggers and deal with anger in a safe and healthy manner. Depression. Depression is a normal emotion, but for men, it can feel like there's no space for you to have these feelings and no resources to help you when you do. Develop skills to accept these feelings and live a freer life. Relationship issues. Does your relationship feel out of balance? Learn to communicate effectively and care for yourself while rekindling a trusting and loving, a trusting loving relationship, period. Strong, silent, and struggling. Does it feel like you have no emotional outlet? Like if you have a problem, you have to bottle it up. Even the idea of asking for help can seem shameful. Being a man in modern society can be a very isolating experience. You might have a partner you can talk to, but you have to be strong for them, not the other way around. 
Therapy provides a confidential, secure place for you to process your emotions and receive the support you need. Don't be too scared to ask for help. Reaching out, um, reaching outside of your comfort zone is hard. A fulfilling, confident life can seem out of reach, but it isn't. You've already taken the hardest step. Therapy can help you be the man you want to be, um, just as it's helped dozens of men before you. It's time to take action and take charge of your life. Um, get the help you need, book a free 60 minute session. Um, if you have any questions or like to schedule an appointment, reach me by phone, text, email, or book a session now with Calendly. Do, 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 do. We got some testimonials. Um, good. Just call me sorry now. It's good to have design notes like this. Um, I'm Peter, a licensed therapist who gets results. I'm also a guy who's been there. It was like to find a great therapist myself. Someone who understood where it was coming from and helped me scale up to be the man I am today. I've helped dozens of men become the men they want to be as a rehab counselor, a crisis line counselor, and as an individual therapist. I found the best and most effective way to help I've to help people has been running my own private practice. I found that the best and most effective way to help people has been I through whatever, whatever I'm proud of practice. Take control of your life, more testimonials, looking for results. Now it's the time to start. FAQs. Here's Where is your office located? How long is typical session? Okay, you take insurance. I take a moral stance against insurance companies. Okay. Um, I'm just skimming this right now because it's really long. Um, I will say that um, for this insurance section, you should definitely say that you don't take insurance, um, but don't make it this big moralistic thing. No one. Um, no one really cares about your moral stance on insurance companies. Um, they just want to know how much it's going to cost them. Um, this sort of thing is like kind of maybe true, but also like, do you really need to say this? Um, it's really long for what it is, I guess. Um, this is how I'm at. Um, how do I set up initial appointment? Good. Cancellation policy. Okay. So there's questions and then more testimonials. CTA. Okay, this is like very thorough, which is good. It's a lot. Um, and so if this is like, I would consider maybe you could push this out into separate pages. You don't have to. Um, but keep in mind that like stuff down here, most people are not going to read. Um, I guess to actually get into what do I think about this? Um, similar to the last one, I think we don't want to lead with the value stack like this because one, this is like really dense and a lot of text, but two, um, you want to lead with some sort of like summary or like summation of what the value proposition is here. So um, actually let me just pull off the other one. So notice how in this last one, it's you don't have to carry the burden of pain alone. Relief is only a message away, telehealth, whatever. And so you do something similar here. I may have to talk about it. Individual counseling for men. Um, I'd say in-person therapy in Nashville. And you could say like, um, because right here, you're kind of juicing SEO. It's like remote therapy or virtual therapy, whatever sort of sessions. In Tennessee. Um, so then from there, I would, you know, bump this down, maybe bump this section up, strong, silent, and struggling. 
Um, this needs to get cleaned up a little bit. Most, like your target audience is not going to think, is not going to speak to themselves. Like if you have a problem, you have to bottle it up. I think how, that's how that can read. Um, so just make this uh, more definitive. Um, you'd say, um, make it relatable. A lot of men feel that when you have a problem, um, it's your job to bottle it up. The idea of asking for help of even asking for help often seems shameful. And so all we're doing here is you're generalizing the problem. Obviously, the person coming to the page because the problem, they are feeling these things, these are real. Um, but don't make it their problem. Make it a bigger social problem that they find themselves within the context of. So it's not just them. A lot of people feel this way. And when you feel this way, the perception is that it's your job to do this. And so it's not that they've made this mistake by bottling it up. It's that everyone's telling them to, to do it. It's that it's the expectation that they do it and that they know that they should ask for help. But it seems shameful to do that because a lot of men feel like this and because that's a social expectation. So make sure that you're shifting the problem far outside the scope of just the person, put them inside of it, and then you're going to offer them the solution to them, the solution to it. Um, and so when you, after you set that up, what you have to do is then dismantle it because the truth is both like in real life and in our marketing scheme is that this is not a real thing. This is not how we think that people should actually live their lives. So then you, we dismantle that. So we say the truth is so Contrary to that, the truth is being a man in modern society can be can be sorry. Um yeah, sorry, it can be um a very isolating experience. Um you know even if you have partner you can talk to um, we're taught that we have to be strong for them not the other way around and so again this is the truth is that even though it's this even though we're we feel like this the reality is that we're very isolated even thing that's supposed to make it better doesn't really make it better. Therapy provides a confidential and secure place for you to act, process your emotions and receive the support you need. So here I would um, I would shift this a little bit and say something along the lines of like, um, you know, therapy gives you access to something. Therapy gives you a set of tools. Therapy provides the space to... Um, you know, deal with these emotions in a way that society has, you know, tip, has typically not given us permission to do so. Um, and make that sound like a strong thing. Um, I think even though therapy, depression, anxiety, all these things are very negative experiences, it's so, so important to cast the process of, of, choosing to go to therapy as some as a strong decision to make and don't focus on the negatives when it comes to like your prospects agency so it's fine to say you know you might feel sad it's fine to say you might feel depressed but don't talk of don't be like don't be a fucking scary cat don't be a little pansy whatever um flip it and say you know find the strength to ask for help or to, um, and then even help we can, we can, um, upscale to like find the strength 
to, that's what I'm asking, to get the support you need. And so it feels much less weak and we don't have to worry about accidentally touching on some of the insecurities that many men have when it comes to accessing these services. Okay, I'm just now seeing that you said that the FAQ is collapsible, which is great. Um, you say stepping. Cyber conference zone um, is hard. Um, it's hard. Let's see. And the fulfilling, confident, life um we've always wanted and seem out of reach and so it's a very very small thing but really what we're doing here is dimensionalizing their problem dimensionalizing their aspirations beyond the current moment because yes they want to not be depressed yes they want to feel confident um but that desire can be amplified when we remind them when we suggest that this is something they've always wanted. This is a kind of life state that they want to continue in perpetuity. Um, and so by talking about it in these terms, it's saying like, yeah, like it's really, really hard what you're doing. But remember, this isn't just something you want right now. This is not something you want in a moment of weakness. This is what you've always wanted. And this is what how you've always thought it should have been. Um, and so, and then, but it, doesn't have to be. You've already taken the first step. Everything can help you be the man you want to be. Just as helped out dozens of men before you. I blow this up into like a bigger number. Um, obviously, this particular therapist may not have had thousands or millions of clients, but it is factually correct that millions of men have gone to, to therapy before. And so you could say, just as, as it's helped millions of men before you hundreds of thousands, however many, um, probably not billions though. Um, it's time to take action and take charge of your life. CTN, this is good. Um, good testimonials. All this stuff is pretty good. Um, and I don't want to dive too much deeper into this because I feel like a lot of the same, I'm going to end up repeating myself a bunch. So the biggest thing I'm going to say is shift this down a section so move this part up um move this down trim this a lot it's similar to the, um this one where it's a lot a lot of words it's going to be in some sort of like box e um section off formatting so the text is going to end up being smaller and this is a lot to read um so try your best to boil this down to you know just the essentials what you absolutely need to have um and um you can even take this out of this formatting and do what this person did and kind of label it as like types of therapy. Um, if there are keyword terms or keywords that you're trying to, you know, you know, rank for, you can turn these things into the, into, into that. So, you know, trauma therapy, PTSD therapy, um, anger control, that sort of stuff. Um, this is a great opportunity to, to do that. Um, you, you do that like as soon as like this section, maybe down here, um, feel free to add more CTAs if you if you like. Um, yeah, before I move on, do you have any questions about this, Evan, or anything I've said? Okay, if not, I will just move on then. All right, so our next piece of copy is five chiropractic funnel nurturing emails. This is from Breezy, I think. Let me know if you guys already did this one. Okay, I'm glad that was helpful, Evan. 
All right, I'm actually going to skip this one. I think you guys already did these chiropractic emails. Um, so if that's not the case, let me know and I'll, I'll make sure to cover them before we end. But um, I think Lindsay probably did. Okay, great. Let me close my door real quick, too. Okay. Um, so that means that next we're doing a lift email for a travel blog. Um, info for us. So blog title is the essential guide to driving in St. Lucia plus key tips. You can actually just click this, open this up. Um, it's a list email for a travel blog. List is already signed up to receive fun stories slash tips to travel better. So pretty aware audience. Just got to take them off the inbox and onto the blog. My first critique. So be gentle, y'all. Gentle, I shall be at mine. Um, so let's first, let's just look, look at this blog. And a fun thing we can do is we can kind of skim this and get a sense of like what they're trying to push people towards. Um, and then that will make judging this lift a little bit better. Um, so just off the top of things I'm going to be looking for are like message match. So it's the lift itself pointing to things or talking about themes that actually get discussed in this. Um, is it maybe not necessarily pre-framing, but like, um, is it going to be connected to the eventual offer that this makes? So if this is like talking about a guide, um, that that's what should get to driving in St. Lucia, like that they should download or something, a PDF, um, does this, does the lift suggest anything like that or the importance of that? Um, is it pre-framing things in a way that makes the blog's job a little bit easier? Um, tonality, is it going to be really, really different from the blog itself. Um, your tone doesn't always have to match, but it can be helpful if it does. Um, so I'm just going to skim this really quick, and then we will check out the, the lift itself. So the essential guide to driving in St. Lucia plus key tips. Um, driving in St. Lucia is like Mario Kart. It's not for beginners. Return your car. Forge your ultimate freedom. It can be really dangerous to arrive here. Buckle up, refreshing the honest guide to driving in St. Lucia. Do you need a car? Is it hard? We drive. Road etiquette. What you need. Considerations. What to expect. Key tips. So pinning, interesting. Okay, so it seems like the main CTA is to like pin it for Pinterest. Okay, cool. So pretty simple stuff. So you didn't write the blog, just the email. Okay, cool. So here's the email. Um, before I look at the alternatives, I'll look at the regular ones. So subject line, the tour bus isn't taking you where you want to go. Preview text. Here's how to get to the hidden gyms by driving to them yourself. Um, title, same as a subject line. Um, just typically, you don't need to title like the actual body copy in your emails. Um, I think the subject line basically functions as the header for that. And so don't just copy your subject line and paste it because if you like when you look at an email, you can still see the subject line when you're looking at the email. So you can like subject line and then the same thing, it's, it's redundant. Um, so big picture. It's a pretty picture. Okay. So you're in heaven, perched on a cliff in Emerald Forest behind you, the ocean glittering below. Where do you go? There's a bus stop to your right, um, but there's a rainbow parrot behind in the trees. Until you hear the rushing of a waterfall beyond, beyond that, if you had a car, then you could drive down the dirt road and see for yourself. 
or you could join the long, sweaty tourist queue waiting for the bu tour bus. Yeah. But driving in a foreign country is scary. Are you even eligible? And how do you go about renting a car? What if you choose the wrong one? Get scammed. None of those things have to happen to you if you're smart and prepared. Click the link below to read my essential guide to driving in St. Lucia. Find out where and how below. Okay. And then the alt subject line was scared to drive abroad. Preview text is don't. Here's should probably be don't. Um, here's how to count the or conquer the mountains with the essential guide to driving in St. Lucia. Oh, okay. Um, Evan mentions that this is something I've seen a lot in Agora, Agora related companies with emails, subject line again in bold as a header. Um, okay. I think what I will say about that is it will, it should never kill your email if you have it. I'm personally of the opinion that if it's redundant, you should remove it just because it allows you to focus people's attention on other things. And yeah. And so it is probably not, it, it may not be mandatory to remove it. It may, your email will probably function just fine. But personally, I would, I would remove it. Um, it would be, it would be interesting to get Sean's opinion on that as well. I know he has a little bit more insight into their practices. Um, okay, so in terms of the original subject line and preview text, I am not a big fan because one, it's not talking about St. Lucia. And so this person clicks this email or clicks this, you know, it clicks the email to open it. Tour bus isn't taking you where you want to go. And then it gets into this like big description. Um, and then there's no mention of St. Lucia probably until the very end. And so this is not priming people to be interested in St. Lucia. And so if I am, happen to find myself in China, for example, and it's like the tour bus isn't taking me where I want to go, here's how to drive the hidden gym. I'm going to click the email and it's not going to apply to me at all. I'm going to be like, well, fuck, that was a waste of time. God damn it. Um, so this needs to make sure, like when you write this, you need to make sure, make sure that you're calling out ahead of time where it's going to be um so i think that this version is a little is a little bit better um however it's missing for me a little bit in terms of um curiosity interest etc um one thing I'll, I'll also call it is that you, um, you're using the dic formula that we talk about a lot typically when we when we talk about DIC, we were talking about within the body copy. And so while the the subject line and the preview text are meant to, um, you know, pump that intrigue a little bit to get people to click, interested enough to click, um, I actually wouldn't count them or count this as the as like a disruption section. Um, you need to capture people's attention once they get into the body copy as well. And yeah, so my, I think it'll be easier to explain once we get into the body. So here's my issue with this is that you open the email and you have these like very vivid descriptions of stuff. Um, and there's not a ton of indication of like where you are, uh, but it's very pretty. And it seems like where you are is really pretty, but also you're saying there's a waterfall like over here that's also really pretty. And if you had a car, you could drive, but there's not a ton of like indication that where I am right now sucks, um, such that I really need a car. Like if I'm in already in heaven, I'm on a cliff overlooking a beautiful forest and there's, or there's a forest behind me and I'm like watching the ocean, maybe a sunset or something. I'm probably pretty happy, right? <laughs> and so, you know, there's maybe a waterfall over there, but like, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. I'll, I'll, okay, shit, I don't have a car, but you know, there are far worse places I could be, like in my office right now. <laughs> um, so th there needs to be some sort of impetus here to, to create that inertia for the reader to want to go. Um, 
I think if you want to go to the descriptive route, <laughs> what you do is you don't start here. You start like here at like, you start the email like, you've been standing in this long sweaty tourist line for 45 minutes and the bus still isn't here. Um, you came to paradise because, um, or like from where you're standing, you can, you can see like from like where you're seeing, you're, you're standing, you can see down the cliff, the beautiful ocean um, and like the forest that like are right before it. But from where you stand, you may as well be a thousand miles away because the bus still isn't here. And as you get sweaty and or as you stand there sweaty, uncomfortable and tired of being alive or hot, same, same emotion. Someone passes you by in a car with the biggest smile in their life. It's a convertible. The wind is blowing through their, their hair. And you think to yourself, I wish that were me. And it could have been you. If only you had known this. And then this is like the link to, to click read more. Like that, that is an example of like DIC that I would say it would be like pretty uh, good because you're taking that emotion that the person has, the experience they don't want to have, oops, sorry. Um, and just embellishing it, embellishing it, embellishing it until it's about to burst. Um, and from there, you, you're like, if only you'd done this one thing, you wouldn't have to go through all these other things. And so I, I think that's a better way to do this using a lot of the same mechanics that you're that you've employed here. Um, and so once we understand that like, that's what the body copy is doing, then we go back to the subject line and we say, okay, well, if we're gonna walk people through this terrible experience in what could have been, how do we preempt that with a subject line? And so um, you, you could have it, like if you are marketing mostly towards people in like the Virgin Islands, or St. Lucia, I think that's St. Lucia in the Virgin Islands. You could say, you know, you you didn't come to St. Lucia to be hot and sweaty in a bus line, for example. And then the previous text can be something about, you know, the hidden gems you're missing because you didn't do this. Is an example of how to like to rework that. The the subject line needs to be playing off of this in a way that's like provocative, basically. Does that make sense? Take care of it. I, I, you know, to your credit, I think it's actually quite challenging to write copy that fits other copy. Um, just because like, that means that you have to take in consideration like everything that comes after you, even as you write, like you want to be doing other things to sort of stimulate people's reading. Um, Amon said, um, regarding not mentioning St. Lucia, my thinking was that the island specifically might not be relevant to a lot of people. So centering around driving might have been better. I think you're actually correct here, um, but I think your correctness needs to drive you to a different decision because the blog is only relevant if you care about driving in St. Lucia. And so anyone who clicks on the, the link in your email because they're interested in driving more generally is gonna end up disappointed because that's not what the link is fulfilling. And so if no one cares about St. Lucia, then you shouldn't actually serve them that link in the first place. Um, obviously, as the copywriter, you don't have control over you know, which blogs get um, marketed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if the job is to market driving in St. Lucia, then you have to um, hope, pray, um, make it so that the people on your list can be interested in a blog about driving in St. Lucia. Um, and that's why we get to 
talking about things like DIC because um, I, you know, it wasn't perfect, but the way I describe how you could set, that, set up that email, it's an interesting story. It's provocative um, such that even someone who hasn't been to St. Lu Lucia before might be like, oh, what is the thing you have to do to not end up in that situation? Um, and then they end up on the blog that then talks about that same situation and they don't feel really disgruntled because you misled them as to what it was about. Um, makes sense, don't want to deceive people. Maybe it'd be better to just market it as a fun story rather than something useful. Mm. You know, th th this is a real challenge and this is something that we all have to come to terms with. Content has to be entertaining, but if it's only entertaining, I don't think it's very valuable. Um, think about, you know, TikToks, YouTube shorts, or, you know, YouTube videos, memes, that kind of thing. Like a lot of those things are entertaining, but they don't stick with us because they're only entertaining. They're not saying anything particularly useful. They're not speaking to experiences we have that are actually resonate with us. And so we see them, we laugh and we move on. Um, if you are investing in content for a website, if you are, um, you know, investing in marketing and e marketing emails and stuff like that. Typically, it's because you feel like you have something that's valuable that you want people to see, that you want people to engage with long term, or at least it's to the extent that they will engage with other things you have, you know, get marketing revenue or you know, ad revenue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you need to also be providing that deeper level of utility, like you're talking about. And so, it is a balance. Um, it is easier to say, to do something that is fun or engaging than it is to do something that's actually useful. And it's even harder to do both those things at the same time. And so I don't think that this copy was bad per se. Um, I think it misses the mark for me in terms of getting people to that click, in terms of connecting um, the dots between the lift and the blog itself. But you have a lot of good components. Um, I think your sense here for um, you know talking about you know the forest, the ocean, the whatever, how beautiful everything is, and then being like the comparison of what could have been. Um, that's the you have the right instincts there. You just need to put the prospect in the shitty situation and then pull them to this. Don't don't give them the choice between good and bad and then have them be comfortable where they are. You have to make them uncomfortable so that they want to go somewhere else. Um, and so that, that's mostly what I'll say. That's a matter of practice. That's a, mat that's a matter of you know, thinking about it a little bit more the way that I have spoken about. Um, and that's not going to come overnight. So definitely don't feel bad about this. Um, you, you have the writing jobs. It's just a matter of you know, figuring out how to put the pieces together. Do you have any other questions, comments, concerns before I move on to our last one? You are welcome, come on. Um, I'm glad you submitted. Um, I don't know if Lindsay said this, but this is something I always try to say during the streams is that it is, takes a lot of courage to submit your copy for critique, especially publicly, especially publicly on a live stream. And so, um, I appreciate that you did this one, so we have content, but two, um, you know, it, it takes guts to do that. And I think you did a pretty good job, all things sounds. Yeah, all things said. All right, so last one, copy of time to come off these medicines now, lead PSL2. Um, So then Kong says, or MVP says, a lead of a VSL script for a book called How to Lower Blood Pressure Naturally in 90 Days or Less. The main prospect of this book is women around the age of 40 with hypertension. Their medications give them all kinds of side effects, which they hate and find frustrating. That's why they're seeking a way to naturally lower their blood pressure and come off these medications for good. Okay. This is a great context. Uh, let me see if you say anything else. Okay, now. Let me see. This is like, <laughs> this, is, this is cool. I like what you did here in that it's like actually style, like designed. And so we see what this might actually look like on the page. Um, yeah. 
All right, so let's just dig into that. I'm looking forward to this. Her doctor says, time to come off these medicines now. Inside, how to lower blood pressure naturally um, as little as 20 minutes a day using a simple secret of ancient Indian monks. No exercises, no extreme pills, no swallowing, no extreme diets, no swallowing pills. Um, so, and as little as 20 minutes a day. My doctor took me off all of my medications and it's been a year and a half and still counting. Cindy Garbra, East Midlands, UK. Um, okay, so just let's just get into this headline complex first. Um, this feels like a good classic. Um, one thing you want to do is make sure that your eyebrow copy is a little bit smaller. Um, and there's definitely some opportunity to to like jazz this up a little bit. And so I don't know what you're gonna get into, but like if one emotion that I'm immediately thinking of is like, I'm sorry, one angle is that um, it's really common in these types of health letters to portray like modern medicine as, um, you know, duplicitous, as trying to take advantage of, of patients, not really caring about their best interests as um, really like ivory tower, elitist, et cetera. And so, if you were to play the, to go with that angle, which I think is tends to be pretty effective, um, you could say something like, stunned. Her doctor said, no, her doctor said, time to come off these medicines now. Um, absolutely stunned. Um, and you could get even more descriptive there. Um, one one note I'll make too is that it seems like, I guess you're using UK here. You might be in the UK. I'm American. Some of the language stuff might be a little bit different in terms of usages and things like that. Um, like I wouldn't think to say, time to come off these medicines now. Um, but if that's the way that you think it should be said, then go for it. I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna quibble about language things here. Um, because Brits are insolvable when you do that. Um, so yeah, so definitely more opportunity here. Time to come off these medicines now. Inside, um, a how to lower blood pressure naturally, as little as three minutes a day using secret, simple secret of ancient um, If we're just talking about like, absolutely jam packing the hell out of our headline complexes. You'd say new method, lower blood pressure, make it new. So it's new, it's big, it's easy. It's easy, it's only 20 minutes, the secret. Um, no exercises, no extreme diets, no swallowing pills. Great. Um, testimonial right off the bat. Love it. So please take a look at this picture. This is a picture of Gary right after taking a prescribed pill to control his blood pressure. At first, his lip swells up like a balloon, and then his face becomes bloated as if someone's choking him. After two hours, Gary's rushed to the hospital, where a doctor hooks him to an ICU unit. Um, and he has to put Gary in, in a coma for nine days. Wow. Um, I think, um, actually, no, let's take it for now. Yeah, actually, no, let, let's say this now. One, um, one really useful kind of tool that we have in our promos is time. In so far, in that, like, sort of the way in which we place temporally allows us to go back and forth and kind of talk to the reader in different ways. When we talk about things that happened in the past, we can sort of be in a more reflective, contemplative state. 
um, which allows us to kind of be like, well, well, should have had this should have happened if only, et cetera, allows us to utilize regret in a more meaningful way than you know the present because we can look at long lasting consequences, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, talking about the future allows us to sort of um, you know future cast what could be if we make the right decision today. Um, and the, then the present is sort of this like base point from which we can we can kind of serve people the stakes um, and say, you know, now is an opportunity. And if you don't act in the opportunity now, it will lead to regret like in the past, or it can, you know, balloon and swell into this great thing like we're talking, like we can see in the future. So when you are leading into your promo and I'm anticipating that this example with Gary is going to be like a sort of like warning tale. I think this is something that may be useful to place in the past. So say this is a, this is a picture of Gary right after um, he took a prescribed pill to control his blood pressure. At first his lips swelled up like a balloon and then his face became bloated as if someone were choking him. After two hours, Gary was rushed to the hospital where a doctor hooked him up to an IC unit and put him into a coma for nine days. Um, then you say, Gary was a healthy adult in his 60s. Um, what else keep reading? Um, he eats more green leafy vegetables than anyone I've ever met. He's as strong as an ox. He swims five miles in the morning. He's a member of the local scuba diving club. If you meet Gary, you could never imagine someone like him being lifeless and hopeless lying in a hospital bed right now. Uh, be careful with this word because this implies he's dead, which he may not be. Um, where his dignity is being robbed away, his children are crying beside his bed, um, waiting for him to wake up. Nine days later, Gary passes away. Um, so yeah, this is definitely um, you, this needs to be changed. You, you say like still, motionless, etc. Because um, if he's dead here, then he's not dead here, or he's still dead there. Um, Gary's one of many victims of traditional medication, um, which was which was prescribed to him by his doctor. Well, it's too late for Gary, but it's not too late for you, because in this video, you'll learn a simple, proven, and 100% natural method to reduce blood pressure effectively in as little as 20 minutes a day. So before we move on, I'm just going to harp a little bit more about the past tense. So also considering that this is, this is being made for a DSL specifically. Um, definitely, I feel more strongly about the, this being in the past tense. You're telling a story of what happened, and then you're saying, don't let what happened to Gary happen in the future to you. Um, so put all of this in the past. And then that's like the sort of story that's leading us to the present moment at which the, the reader watcher is faced with the choice about what to do with their life. Um, I, I like the way in which you're composing your sentences. They're short, they're very easy to understand. The language is good. However, there are a couple places in which I think it gets a little bit too simple to the point of being uh, choppy. Um, so for example, this right here, Gary's one of many victims of traditional medication, period, which was prescribed to him by his doctor, period. This can be simplified to Gary is one of many victims of traditional medication prescribed by doctors. And you can even say doctors and doctors from the medical establishment, if you want to make it even more um, charged. Um, this, I don't, I actually really hate this, this word well here. I'd say instead of well, you can say, however, so we need to juxtapose these things. It's the contrast, not well. So anyway, he died. It's, um, you could say, and while it may be, you know, too late for Gary, you say, it's not too late for you. Or, you know, something similar where it's like, um, it's not too late for you to avoid this risk. 
Um, because really what you're acting on is you're saying there's a risk, you're implying that there's a risk of this happening to the, to the viewer. And so you can't say it's definitely gonna happen to you and most people watching are not gonna think it's gonna happen to them. What you're playing on is that risk that it could happen to anybody, even a healthy person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure that that's what you're highlighting there. Um, any comments? So a simple proven 100% natural method to reduce blood pressure effectively in as little as 20 minutes a day without side effects, without becoming an exercise maniac. Um, see. And so additional, not an option, um, without following an extreme diet. This two-step method can be traced back to it. Um, and ancient monk in India more than 2,500 years ago. It was discovered by a world-renowned American professor, John Kabat-Zinn, in a study done by international by the International Journey, Journal of Health Sciences with 32 participants, more than 55, they all have high blood pressure. The reading is more than 140, 90. Oh, oh, their blood pressure reading is more than 140 over 90, okay. That means they're a life-threatening risk of heart disease and they'll require you to take meds for the rest of their life. The scientists train the specialists with this two-step method, which takes them as little as 20, 20 minutes a day to complete, and they can do it everywhere they want. The result is breathtaking for them because it shows a reduction of up to 23 points reading without a single pill of meds. Imagine what that means for those lucky participants. It means they can remove one, two, or all of those life-sucking meds for good. Imagine to be able to play, walk, or go upstairs without the pain from swollen ankles or um, that lisinopril lizino causes. Um, sleep, sleeping like a log without waking up in the middle of the night because of dry coughs. And finally here, so again, we're talking about the, this is, now we're in the future. So imagine, geez, here. Being able to sleeping and to finally hear what you've always wanted from your doctor, time to come off these medicines. Now. The American Heart Association says this method shows promise as an effective intervention to lower blood pressure. And according to the University of, American, of Maryland Medical System, yes, this method can help lower your blood pressure. So let me tell you this, um, and let me go back now and talk about this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of good here, and so I'm going to talk about that. But first, I just want to go back and talk about some of like, the language. This section is way too choppy. Um, like, there's no reason that this can't be like one sentence. Um, and maybe like some of this information isn't even necessary. The way in which you're targeting these sorts of promos is going to be at older people anyway. Um, certainly you don't need to say that there's 32 participants over or 32 participants specifically, but you can even say um, seniors or whatever euphemism for older people. You could say um, in a study done by the International Journey of Health Sciences of Health Sciences in patients over 55 in high blood pressure patients over 55 um, with the most um, for life threatening risk of heart disease, parentheses 140 over 90, and then move on. Um, when you read this, it feels really choppy and disjointed, and the connection between these ideas that you're placing, that you're seeding, is a little bit hard to follow. And so that's why I think it's really important to, you know, have that cohesiveness. Um, with that said, you do some a few things that are really really smart. talking about the sort of things that you can do or things that you won't have to do um, that probably your readers or viewers are already experiencing. Um, very textbook, very effective, very important. So great job doing that. Um, great job citing credible you know, um, institutions and associations because that does um, give credibility to your copy. 
it's a little bit early to me to bring in this bit about the ancient monk. Um, I think you could just actually kill these two these two senses, so just delete these entirely, um, and then move the intrigue to this part, and say um, in a study done by the Sternal um, scientists trained. Now, less is like a UK thing. I would change this verb. You know, scientists trained participants using um, you know this two-step method, um, a simple two-step method, a whatever kind of method, put the intrigue on this. And then later on in your promo, you can talk about why this method's novel. And when you talk about that, you can get into like this whole thing with the monk from however many thousands of years ago, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But before that, it's a little bit, um, you can't just drop this and not talk about it immediately. Um, at least without like an opening loop. If you tried everything without results, it's then it's not your fault. That's because all other methods on Earth I'm aware of are treating the symptom of high blood pressure. Um, are treating the symptom of high blood pressure and not the root cause of it. So connect those ideas. The method I'm about to show you is totally different. It's about treating the root of high blood pressure, which removes the need for traditional medication. What's more, this method has nothing to do with blood thinners, artery cleaning, or any of that wacky science you've heard about. It has nothing to do with prescription pills, going decaf, cutting out salts, or expensive therapy. Great copy. Because it treats the root cause of high blood pressure itself, which is the nervous system in your brain. I think this feels a little bit premature. What I would do here is you need like another line or two. So um, because it treats the root cause of, of high blood pressure, that, let's see, like, that no. Uh, medical doctor wants to talk about and um, you know you could throw in a couple lines you know yeah so you could, you could do uh, you could say that no medical doctor wants to talk about it's the one single most powerful system in terms of controlling how your body functions um, and ha and improving the function of this system in your body, not only or you know has X Y Z positive benefits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you say, like, I'm talking about the nervous system in your brain. Um, And then probably there's going to be some objection here. And so you have to like a very quick objection top layer. And you could say, um, and you can even just acknowledge it exists. And even though um, you might be wondering what your nervous system has to do with high blood pressure just acknowledge it and move on um, what i'm about to show you will both sorry as the power equal since of what's it the secret I'm about to share with you has the power to both 
change your life forever. And piss off quite a few people in power. And we could say, you know, don't say quite a few. You say the. Piss off the people. Uh, sorry. The people in power that have been taking advantage of situation for decades. And so in doing that, what you've now done is you've gone through, you're saying it's completely different. You're talking about, okay, it's really talk. It, now we're addressing the real thing that no one wants to talk about, which explains why you've never heard about it. Um, you're embellishing it making it sound like a bigger and bigger deal. This is like a crazy, you're, ta you're targeting the this, this system that has the ability to change so much about your body, you're improving it. And so you're going to experience these benefits, not just in terms of your high blood pressure, but also in, you know, X, Y, and Z other areas also. Sexual performance, whatever. Um, you reveal the system that you're targeting, and then you say, you address the objection of, you know, they might not know. And then say that there's a secret that's going to be shared. And so, I may have just told you this, but this isn't the real reveal. There's another reveal I'm about to show you that, that that's going to be the thing that changes everything. Um, and it's going to upset a whole bunch of people because the reason why you don't know this, or sorry, you don't know the secret is because of these people. And so not only have we revealed the powerful mechanism, we've revealed, we've revealed that there's a secret behind it that's going to be the key to fixing it. And we're telling them why they don't know the secret. And it turns out that the reason why is because of the same people who are already resentful against. And so you're leveraging their existing beliefs to make them feel a certain thing or feel even more strongly um, about the people they already don't like, which then makes you sound more credible when it comes to the copy and the claims you're going to make further on. All right. So, yes, I'm talking about big pharma. That's why I don't promise this video, this video will be here when you return if you leave right now. Um, you haven't said this yet, and so I would just say, um, I can't promise this video will be here when you return if you leave. Um, because they're trying everything to take this kind of information down from the internet and to rob you of this opportunity to finally come off these meds for good. And at the moment, I'll show you exactly, it's uh, in, in a moment, I'll show you exactly step by step um, how to replicate this method from the comfort of your home. Um, it's finally come off one, two, or all three of these like sucking meds are good. Um, this is good, open loop, plus a bunch of bullets. I'm not going to read it now. It's good. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Joe Amanda, MD. In my 30s was diagnosed with hypertension. Back then, because of my training in medical school, I knew taking meds was the only answer. That's the only answer. At first, I took my medications religiously every two times per week. So to speak two times every week my blood pressure reading start uh, started so again past tense went down but the side effects started if you've been ankle swelled up so painful so painfully i couldn't walk upstairs then came the dry coughs it's so bad i couldn't sleep or eat my body hurt all over from the coughs my back felt like someone stabbing me with a knife, not to mention the stomach pain. I asked myself, how on earth could someone live like this? Um, this is this is a pretty good copy. Um, it's very uh, vivid, and you're 
being vivid in a way that describes the experience or the likely experience of someone reading this who's going through these problems. And so this is good. Um, let's see, I tried. I was running, walked for tournaments daily, doing weight training. Tried to I cut out salt and decaf. Um, saying, so saying this, you say, but nothing works. It's making it even more bleak. Um, and say, and after risking going diabetes with a fork drug, I forced myself to find an alternative way to treat my condition. Just let me discover the secret. You can make the story longer. Okay. Um, okay, so this is like quite a lot of copy, so I'm not gonna like go through everything again. I think generally speaking, by like copy that is submitted to the show standards, this is very good. Um, it's clear that you understand structurally what really the components that need to go into this type of lead and how to sort of add in elements of your understanding of the readership to or viewership to heighten the sense of, the sense of authenticity. Um, and I think you do that quite successfully throughout multiple sections here. It may be the case that some things like these bullets might be a little bit out of place. Sean would be a better person to uh, take a look at this and make some comments on this. But in terms of like what you've actually written here, I think this is pretty good from a structural standpoint and like a sort of element standpoint. What I will say is that some of the actual language is a little bit off. Um, this may be like a, an ESL thing. I don't know if English is your first language. It's many people, it's not. Um, but some of the tenses, like the past tense, present tense stuff, um, definitely need to be um, corrected. Um, and I mark that in some places, but not every single place. And so just be mindful of that as you go through. Um, because when you're operating on such an emotional level like this, getting those elements right makes everything you write so much more powerful. And with the way you've written this thus far and the amount of work I can see you put into this thus far, it would be doing yourself a disservice to have your copy not be working at full efficacy of, because of simple mistakes like that. So um, that could be a matter of you know getting a proofreader. That could be a matter of just reading through it one or two more times yourself and making those edits. Um, but just make sure that like those language components are being adjusted for because from what I see here, this is quite good um, to the extent that I will ask Sean personally to go back and read through this and maybe share some of his thoughts with you. Um, if he has time, because th this seems good. And I think Sean would be able to give you some more precise feedback that um, may be even more valuable and help you take this to the next level, because this is very promising. Um, I don't know if you have experience writing this kind of copy before, or if this is just a spec thing or what, but um, this is work you should be proud of. And yeah, that was the last one. So we're gonna call it a night now. It's now six o'clock, I need to go feed myself and feed my dog. Do any of you in chat, all three of you have any questions before I hop off, either you can answer. Because if not, I'm just gonna close the stream. All right, so that sounds like a no. So we are going to call it then. Thank you for coming to the stream if you are still here. Thank you. Thanks to you for gonna get my first, oh. That is, I, I hope that it is already happening, Dane. If not, aspirationally, I wish you the best of luck. Um, but you know, regardless, we are here to support. Where should I go? Instagram, FAL, I don't know what that means. Fall? Uh, yeah. So anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for submitting your copy. It's great. If you want to submit your own copy or you just want to come 
watch our bonus content or do any of that fun stuff, you can do so by joining us at patreon.com slash the copy that show. There is like a metric fuck ton of value in there. We've said that I'm going to use that word. And, um, you know, every week we do these copy reviews. So if you want to see your copy, you're going to these, these streams, go there. And that's all the plug I will do for today. Um, have a good night, guys. Good morning. Good afternoon. Johnny.